The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this feel-good Coach Saban Friday, December 15, 2023. This sports program starts now. Football! Happened last night in a way that we have not seen in a long, long time. Now, the halftime score was very close to being a record breaker for the history of the NFL as the biggest blowout that an NFL game has ever seen. 42 zip. I believe the record is 45 zip. Yep. And the NFL is 103 years old. We almost saw the biggest first half ass beating Yeesh. in the history of the entire league last night as the Las Vegas Raiders poured it on. The Los Angeles Chargers. Now, three turnovers in the other team's red zone in the first quarter Ooh. is obviously not a great way to no. start this entire thing. No. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Sweet shirt. One half yeah. of the hammer. Bad Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here. And as we're watching the beginning of that game, Tone, you're a big under better. Mm -hmm. But as that first quarter just mm -hmm. started running away from everything, mm -hmm. yeah. you had to wonder to yourself, damn. The Raiders are about to get the over themselves in the first half. This was a team, okay, this, this Raiders team, that we had heard people chit-chat from interviews, Max Crosby talking to Taylor Rooks last night, where he said that he heard people asking whether or not he should shut it down for the rest of the season to protect himself, and maybe the Raiders should just mail it in for the, the particular year and just go ahead and recoup for next year whenever it's a new head coach and it's a new building and everything like that. And Max Crosby said, I want to hear, tell me more of that. Tell mm -hmm. me more of that. If they went out, they're 9-8 and eight on the season. Mm -hmm. yep. But the way the AFC is, they'll be in the wild card race. If Antonio Pierce in this Brand new Raiders, which happen to be like the old school Raiders. Make it to the playoffs. You got to assume that Antonio Pierce is going to be the head coach. You got to assume that that locker room was so incredibly pumped that Josh McDaniels got the hell out of there that now they're willing to do all the little things. I think we'll be talking to Max Crosby in about 18 minutes okay. or so. He's still got a lot of things on his schedule. We're trying to figure it out. But I'm excited to hear from him and them about why they feel the way they do at this exact moment. Why does this team look nothing like what the team looked like at the beginning of the season when Josh McDaniels was there? Why do they look inspired? Why is the moxie all the way back? Is it about the little things that they brought back into the locker room? Whether whether it's the basketball hoop or the soul train line that they were doing yep. for years and years mm -hmm. and got rid of that. Why did the Raiders do what they did to the Chargers last night? And on the flip side, here's a quote from the head coach currently. It's 12.02 Eastern. Yeah, That's right. The head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers one week ago about his program and his team and if he feels as if he's lost the locker room. Randy, I mean, there's so many close losses that it's kind of the you can compare and said kind of similar things about you know, things that went one way, things that went the other way. Do you do you still feel like your messaging is hitting to people, to the you know members of this team, and still coming across? Yeah. Otherwise, you'd get blown out of the stadium. Okay. You know, in one of these, you get blown <laughs> out of the stadium, and that hasn't happened. We've been tight with the best in the league, and um, the way we've practiced, you would know, and the way that our guys compete in the game. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to have to continue to make adjustments to close these games out and play a cleaner game in all three phases. Um, you know, but this is a close locker room, and they got a lot of pride. Yep. And and we're going to be tested moving forward. Okay, that's so that's less than a week ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like what the Chargers players heard was, "Oh, is that right?" So that's what we oh, got. That's all it's going to take. Now that's what the internet <laughs> was saying about Brandon Staley. Yeah, big time. A lot of people on the internet, former players, people that have been around in the NFL a long time, said, "You know what this is? This is this team saying." On a grand stage, primetime game. Yep. Division. Divisional rival yeah. game. We hate this. Yeah. Yep. Now, I don't think any player wants to put bad tape on the field. 
And every once in a while, you can run into a buzzsaw. Our Colts team did that to the Pittsburgh Steelers a couple of times, the New England Patriots a couple of times. That can take place. But the lack of fight, the lack of will. Now, they're on Easton Stick as a quarterback. He'd only had 23 attempts going into the game. He'd been in the NFL since 2019. Damn. Did you know that? No. I did not know that. They put that up there. He got, he got drafted 2019 or whatever, came into the NFL. That's a long time. This guy's been around yeah. a long time. So right before he took that first snap, I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe Easton. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe this is a situation, you know, Jordan Love was right. back up mm-hmm. for a long time. Geno Smith was obviously a starter, but then he was a backup for a long time. He comes back, finally gets his opportunity. He does well. I think to myself, maybe Easton Six yeah. can be the guy. Absolutely. Maybe the boys will rally around this vet who hasn't had his opportunity. Mm-hmm. He's been sitting around waiting for this glorious moment. They, that did not happen. No, We're close. talking about mistake, mistake, mistake. Yep. Ineptitude, ineptitude, ineptitude. It looked bad. Aiden O'Connor on the offense side looked like a freak. Yep. The Raiders defense turned it over so many times. And Chuck Pagano yesterday said that if he he was Antonio Pierce talking to this Raiders team. He would say to them, hey, we punch them right in the mouth early yep. and then step on their throat. They're going to quit. They want to quit. And guess what? They did. Yeah. That was an ass beating last night, Boston Connor, from start to finish. And if you're a Raiders fan or Raiders man mm-hmm. and you see Aiden O'Donnell dropping balls like that to Jacoby Myers making phenomenal catches and Devontae Adams having the time of his life on the sideline and obviously old tight end. From Notre Dame. Hell yeah. This dude's an absolute beast. Mike Mayer. I almost called him John Mayer. But that's because that's how smooth this dude is at the size in which he is. He's a road blocker. He's a freak out of the... Look at this. Jeez. They just dominated every single facet of the game last night. If you're a Raiders fan, you got to be pumped. If you're a Chargers fan, you're ready for change. And right now, as sports fans, we're all eagerly awaiting about when the decision will be made on Brandon Staley. Yeah, if you're a Raiders fan, I feel like you are in the mindset of, hey, nobody wants to play us right now. Like After they just put up 63 points, after getting shut out yeah. the week before, it's like, hey, now we know what the Raiders look like at their best. And their offensive line for the Chargers, not <clears throat> terrible, not, not awful. That's Rashawn Slater. He's a first-round pick. Mm-hmm. He just went right around them. Then they just looked at the ball on the ground and let them score. Jordan, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is, it is pretty bold. I believe two plays later for the Chargers, there's a unbelievable pick six from Jack Jones. Breaking news. There it is. No. As we are speaking about the potential situation, it is now official. Brandon Staley has been fired ah, okay. as the I mean, Los Angeles to. Chargers head coach. There was a lot of historic records that were broken last night. The most amount of points in the Raiders franchise history. Obviously, one of the biggest blowouts in the first half a game has ever been seen in the NFL. And now, after years of this conversation taking place, after close loss, after close loss, after close loss, Mm. after really not getting any better and seemingly wasting Justin Herbert's entire existence Uh as this former quarterback who's a defensive coordinator, who was an NCAA D3 coach just about five years Mm. before he got his head coaching job. People have been wondering when he was going to get fired. Ownership, though, maybe doesn't want to have to pay fired coach yeah. and do the whole song and dance. Yep. They decide today he is fired. Also fired from the Los Angeles Chargers. We no. are learning. Oh, no. No. no way. General manager, friend of the program. Oh, no. Tom Telesco yeah. is what I am being told as well here. So oh. GM and head coach out after what happened last night to a division rival on prime time. And, and GM. There's yeah. only one reason why. There's, I get three, rid of weeks There's yeah. three weeks left. There's three weeks left for them. They got interim GM and interim head coach. Jeez. All eyes are on the future. All eyes are on next season. Hopefully with Justin Herbert with another coach, another offensive coordinator. Because remember, Kellen Moore came in this year. He was supposed to be the answer. Oh yeah. yeah. Remember, whenever he was down at Dallas, he was the guy. He led back to everything. Then Mike McCarthy takes over to play calling and says, "I know what Kellen wants to do. Kellen wants to run up the scoreboard mm-hmm. because Kellen wants to be a head coach." Someday. Day. I used to be in Kellen's spot. And if you think about where Dallas is right now with Mike McCarthy calling yes, plays for your spot. and where the Chargers are yeah. right now with Kellen Moore calling plays, I think Kellen Moore wishes that he was potentially in a different place. Mm-hmm. Will he be the interim head coach? Now all eyes are who's next and what do they do? This opens up for, though. Oh, oh yeah. Big time. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep, it does, GM. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. Coach. Doesn't it? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, this is kind of the situation I've been staring down for the past three weeks. Once the Chargers beat the Patriots 6 nothing in New England, it was like, oh, okay, so Staley's probably got a week or two left, and then this will get really ugly, and here we are. I, I, I still, you know, will stand by. We'll figure that out later, but 
When you mentioned all those teams, like the Colts ran into the Steelers and the Patriots and the Ravens sometimes, I bet, like the Raiders weren't rolling. They just got shut out. And then worst in franchise history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Antonio yeah. Pearson at speech after the game actually said, Tay, what you say last uh, last week we're on the wrong side of history. This week we're on the right side of history. Most points in franchise history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was not good. No. Less than a week ago. And, and both teams were five and eight. It, it was like clearly one team saying, Hey, we are not mathematically eliminated. We can still win out and have a chance. And then the other team saying, kind of like a la Anthony Lynn when he was with the Chargers before Brandon Staley saying, Hey boys, we don't have a chance to make it in the playoffs anymore, even though they did at that time Mm -hmm. the year before they hired Brandon Staley. What a shit show. Dump. Right? Oh, yeah. Dump of a building. Legit. Yes. Like, their fans are very passionate and everything Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. They've had to deal with a city change. Oh, yeah. Right? You just go back to that whole thing. Playing in an MLS stadium. Then going into the Rams stadium. Mm -hmm. Then the Rams win a Super Bowl (laughs) in L.A. And then now, you got the face in Justin Herbert. Everybody says it. Everybody thinks it. Everybody knows that to be the case. And you're just kind of, I guess, fumbling it out of even relevance. It is a fascinating dynamic over there because even if you have, and we don't know how much money the Spanos family has, it's mm-hmm. been that's a whole nother added Bingo. Right, yeah. thing into this <laughs> entire right. conversation. But it's like even if you have, and we're seeing this with Carolina, mm-hmm. it's hard. It is really hard to win. Yeah, you need a lot of players. So if you can find somebody that's won before. Like, normally, that's why it's a safe decision to make. Bill Belichick. They have to. Could you fathom? Now, that's people are going to say that that's us saying that he's out. Of, we don't know that. Don't know that. We have no idea. They got a roster. Bill and Bob Kraft are going to talk. Okay? They'll decide what happens. Mm-hmm. Bill could get an extension for five years. We have no idea what's going to take place up there. We are only telling you what everything is being reported and talked about. Yes. We are just as surprised as everybody else that Bill Belichick could potentially no longer be with the Patriots. But that's a reality, allegedly, mm-hmm. from all people mm-hmm. talking around the situation. You got Herbert, obviously. Yeah. So, and with Belichick, you would think you'd be able to find an offensive coordinator. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. would hope that would be the yep. case. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, probably Josh McDaniels, if we're being serious here. He, he loves to bring back uh, his former his former play caller. He does keep it in house mostly, what but Josh Billy McDaniels o? has not had a lot of success. Billy O this year did not have a lot of success. No. But is that because of the quarterbacks, because of the groceries that he had, or because he doesn't have it anymore? Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming it's a grocery situation there, and they got groceries in yeah, L.A. I, I would think that Bill Belichick, with a player like Derwin James, would make that defense and Derwin James specifically probably like defensive player of the year just because of how good he is around the ball and in the back end. You uh, just, I mean, you just ha- if and again if, we don't yeah. we don't we know. don't know we don't, we don't know. we're not acting like we're knowing no we're absolutely we don't envy not. the position that we, Bob Kraft yeah yeah I do not bingo yeah. right we do not envy no Bob Kraft's position at all but, but if it were to happen the Chargers need, you need to sell out completely to go get Belichick like it's it's been the same way. Since they got Herbert, it's like you're relying on this guy to basically score 45 points a game. You need him to to overcome everything else that's going on. I mean, ultimately, like, yeah, wasting Herbert's potential and stuff like that. But that's why Staley got fired is he's a defensive guru and the defense hasn't been sure. worth the shit since he got there, pretty much. You bring in a guy like Bill who can revamp that defense, you would think, almost overnight. Like, they need they enough of this splash stuff. Like, hey, we want a, a young guy who can unlock more of Herbert's potential. Like... Don't need to do that. Herbert's proven like he's a dude. He's a guy. Like he's gonna be fine no matter what. You need a guy who knows how to win, and you need someone who can kind of maybe break this like Chargers curse where it's it doesn't matter who they have. They just can't seem to get over that hump. You if if Bill Belichick is to get fired, which we do not know, or no. or mutually parts ways or whatever it whatever happens, the Chargers. Give them a hundred million dollars. So we don't know if they have that amount of money, but we can get a glimpse into what the future looks like from the Spanos family. They have released a statement. I want to thank Tom and Brandon for their hard work, dedication, and professionalism, and wish both them and their great families nothing but the best. Said owner and chairman of the board, Dean Spanos. These decisions are never easy, nor are they something I take lightly, especially when you consider the number of people they impact. We are clearly not where we expect to be, however, and we need new vision. We are clearly not where we expect <laughs> yeah, to be. What? However, and we need new vision. All right. Uh, I thought I was the doing nothing Owner. in the name of continuity was not a risk I was willing to take. Our fans have stood strong through so many ups and downs in close games. They deserve more. Frankly, they've earned mm-hmm. more. Building and maintaining a championship caliber program remains our ultimate goal. And reimagining how we achieve that goal begins today. And that's from Dean Spanos. I like that he quoted himself. 
in the middle of his quote yeah. that he released himself. My God. Pretty good. That's really good. Yep. They're not getting Bill, I'll tell you that much. If that is how the owner is <laughs> We speaking, don't know. Bill Hold Belichick. On. We do not know where that, what we just saw. Yeah, but we do, and maybe I didn't read it right because, you know, as people speak – Different, his flow could have been much sure, different. We read it right. There's a couple sentences there that obviously we don't fully understand, but I like what he's thinking. He's saying, hey, listen, that is from the Chargers. Okay. Yeah. From the Chargers. Okay. Just release the quote that you don't have to put in the middle of it that yeah. he said it. Ain't going We there. get it, you know. And the Chargers social team is very good. Hopefully they don't get canned, yeah. Let's make sure we keep the social yeah, team right. and the digital team over there good. at the Chargers. They are very talented. Maybe, maybe put them. Yeah. yeah, move them up. Move Maybe them up. the social team run the entire damn program over there. But them talking about reimagining the vision of what a successful, you know, that mm -hmm. whole thing, that's good news. That means they're going to invest. Them talking about their fans earning it and deserving it, I think it's the right angle, too. What's the angle normally? This one is to let them know that they hear them, they see them, and they're hoping for the same. But everything will be about the actions they take from this point forward. Because last night was a great indicator of where that locker room and culture is, and it's in the dumps. Yeah. Hey, if you're a Chargers fan, you should be bummed out about it, like Kirk yeah. Herbstreit said he was late in the fourth quarter. Bummed out about last night or today? Uh, Chargers fans should be pumped about where they yes, are today, yeah. today, but bummed out about where it got to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think definitely bummed out last night, but like there was a lot of people calling for that job at halftime of last night, and I, I assume they they weren't kind of bummed out about that one. I think they should thank the Raiders. We were talking about it yesterday, how kind of when you when you play your rivals and it doesn't go well. This stuff happens like the Steeler. The last six times the Browns have got a new head coach or fired their head coach, sorry, was after a Steelers loss. The Steelers fired their OC after a Browns loss. We talked about uh, yesterday with like the Patriots. And, and when you play your rival, you don't look good against your rival. Like it kind of spurs action. Last night, Chargers, Raiders, like it spurs action there. Like, and it, it's kind of how it happens in the division and stuff. Because like it's that. like a measuring stick. Yeah. Like the Colts, Patriots. So after the Colts lost to the Patriots last year, that was when Jim Irsay, right. after a long time of like not good stuff happening, gets moves on from Frank Reich, brings in Jeff Saturday. The alleged report yep. from Tommy Curran yep. is after the Colts beat the Patriots in Germany, allegedly mm -hmm. from sources mm -hmm. in the know at yep. the time, Bingo. is what Tommy Curran said. Right. That was when the decision was made, we're moving on. It is like a measuring stick, like the owner actually sees – Oh, that's where we're supposed to be. That's where we're not supposed to be. Joining us now is a man who might have a little bit more information. Senior NFL insider for ESPN. He puts the J in ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Yeah, Adam Schefter. Schefter. Oh, no. Oh, okay. oh, he's getting a call get, right now. Maybe slammed. more answers. Yeah. The J, huh? We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come this back. This is the uh, number one job, though. He's doing investigating. What's that? No matter who else comes open, you get Herbert. That's the number one. I think so. I think that's probably how people will view it, if I had to guess, because you think about it, any job that's been taken uh, that is high profile by coaches that are kind of sought after in a lot of places, they're like, where's the best quarterback at? Mm -hmm. You heard Chuck Pagano talk yesterday. He's like, mm -hmm. You need a quarterback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You talked to Coach Rule the other day, you need a quarterback. Yep. Like in football, you just need a quarterback. And quarterbacks know that. That's why they're making $40 million a year or whatever. Right. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Shefty. Shefty, thank you for making time. Take two. Let's try it again. Hey, what piece of information did you just learn? Anything sweet? Are we breaking more news on this uh, particular Friday? No, it just came. The, the text, it's a little rush hour right now, right? Where basically the Chargers just fired Brandon Staley. They just fired. Tom Telesco. Tom Telesco's hired three head coaches. And so they decided to make this a total house cleaning. And I think that this will become a highly attractive job because of the quarterback. But there's no way in my mind, I'm watching that game last night and there had to be 10 people across the league that texted me saying they have to fire him tomorrow, right? They have to fire him tomorrow, right? And I think that the mild surprise was that they also got rid of the GM. Like, you don't see teams do a house cleaning with three weeks left. But I don't think they could step foot back in that home stadium next week and trot out that same head coach as disliked as he was. And so they made the decision today to do their first in-season head coaching change in 25 years. The last time they did it was when they fired Kevin Gilbride and replaced him with June Jones. And to me, look, they were – going to do this this was going to happen it was inevitable and when last night unfolded in the historic fashion that it did one of the most embarrassing losses in nfl history mm -hmm. 
there's no need to even wait. Just do it today. And, and they did. NFL is 103 years old. You said it was inevitable. I think we all kind of understood that. We would continue to ask you about your hot seat thermometer. <laughs> do you think it's because it's a rival game, because it's primetime game? If that's Sunday, 1 o'clock, is this still the same thing? Or is it Spano's family know that literally every Chargers fan around the country yeah. had access to watch it and saw it? Like, Do you think it's because it was primetime game and division well, rival that it expedited it even more? It's a great question, Pat. I think here's the deal. The owners, uh, Dean Spanos, had said to the people out there over and over, we're not doing anything till the end of the year. Now, if this had happened on Sunday, I still think they would have done this on Monday. You can't have a beatdown like that and not react to it in some type of way. But the fact of the matter is, when it's on a Thursday night, it just makes it easy the next day. Like, you have added built-in time the next week to get everybody ready. Do I think that they would have done this after all? If this loss happened Monday, would it have happened again on Monday? I believe it would have. Okay. I believe it would have. Okay, so now who goes up? Who goes up to interim head coach? And you still need interim GM because there's going to be injuries and things that are going to happen and roster manipulation over the final three weeks, I would assume, right? Who's normally going to take yeah. those jobs? Well, I would imagine in the front office they've got a gentleman by the name of Jojo Wooden. I could see him being the interim GM for right now. Uh, they have Kellen Moore. Uh, the offensive staff, you know, I just got a text, stay tuned. I asked about the interims, was told, stay tuned. We'll see exactly what they do. And here's the other thing to keep in mind. This organization, and I don't know whether they'll admit it, they debated making a coaching change in the past, this season. They debated it twice in season. Like, I got a call. There was a Monday that we were on, and if I'm being honest, I was waiting for a text that the Chargers were making a move with their head coach oh, after wow. their after their Sunday night loss to the Baltimore Ravens. Like, I was waiting the entire time. I thought it was going to happen on the show the way it happened today, but I thought it was going to be that Monday. And I remember being up till about 3 in the morning that night trying to get confirmation that it hadn't happened yet after the game, and it didn't, and they decided to stand pat that week. And there was another time earlier in the year Gee. that they were considering it as well. So, again... It comes back to the inevitable nature. This was going to happen. Got it. This was inevitable. Nailed it. Be down like that last night in one of the most embarrassing losses I've ever witnessed. You make the change today. All right. Well, Shefty, we appreciate the hell out of you, man. Continue to stay on top of it all mm -hmm. up till 3 a.m. Wow. Damn. Waiting to see. We appreciate your persistence. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Adam Schefter. Thank weekend. you. Yeah, yeah, Shefty. Shefty. Okay, so two times this year. So whenever we were asking him about the hot seat thermometer, yeah. Yeah. he had yeah. a lot of, he, he was. He knew. Oh, yeah. Right? We, we need to watch that back. And see his reaction yep. so that we know his tells Watch for later. His body language. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ooh. So we know for later. Mm -hmm. Speaking of tells in body language, when this dude takes off his shirt, yeah. his body language actually does speak to you. Yeah, it does. On his chest, right here, it says be legendary. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, be legendary. And then he's just got phenomenal portraits yes. oh my God. all over his body. Last night he was smoking a big fat stove, yeah. sitting on a set, shirtless in his team stadium after a historic ass beating of a division rival. Ladies and gentlemen, the Condor, Max Crosby. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're muted, you're muted. You're back, you're back. That's on our side, not on yours. Oh, you're good. What's up, y'all? Hey. Appreciate you having me on. Congrats, yeah. Doug. Yeah. All right, let's dive in. Uh, I watched your interview with Taylor Rooks, and one of your answers, you said, people are asking if I'm going to shut down for the rest of the year to kind of rest me for next year, and Devontae, they're saying the same exact thing. And you said, like, keep telling me that. We need to hear that. Keep telling us that. And then after the game in the locker room, you gave a speech to the boys about how everything is basically still in front of you. We can still go get that. Has Antonio Pierce kind of pitch that mindset or what did you guys know last night was going to happen? Like what, where are we in that locker room over there right now with an already fired coach and then a historic ass beating on Thursday night vibes got to be great condor. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. And, that, and that's something AP definitely preaches, you know, we, as a team and as the unit, like we've never been closer and, uh, you see everybody buying in and staying together. And, um, you know, especially after the Minnesota loss, like, that was a game, you know, it was super ugly as 3-0, you know, but, you know, defensively we played, in, you know, an incredible game for the most part. Um, just offensively we had, you know, a couple of tough, you know, 
tough drives down in the red zone where we had a turnover, we missed a field goal. Or, you know, it just it just didn't go our way. So for us, we knew um, we could be better, and uh, I feel like that motivated us to go out there and do what we did last night. So um, we believe in AP, we believe in everybody um, in this building, and you just see everybody coming together closer. So no, we didn't predict. You know, we we're going to go out there and do what we did last night, but we had. Uh, you know, we had the all you know all time confidence going into that game because we wanted to bounce back from uh, you know the Minnesota loss. You talked about how tight your locker room is, and it's obvious. I mean, whenever we're watching and something like last night happens, that's obviously a crew that is pretty well connected. Uh, Soul Train Line came back. I think I saw some basketball had come back. Has there been any other additions to the locker room over this last few weeks? As the vibes are at the most high they've ever been for the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, you know, that's that's pretty much it for the most part. You know, you see guys playing Super Smash Bros. every single day. They got a little setup in the locker room. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely a O-lineman uh, type deal. You know, everybody's in there and, and the specialists as well. Yeah. So they're getting after in Super Smash Bros. But um, honestly, my favorite's the hoop. You know, I, I, I just call out the young guys and we play horse and – uh, me and Josh Jacobs, you know, we, we definitely have our wars. And, you know, it just keeps keeps energy in here light. But at the same time, everyone's competing and um, everyone's getting closer. So it's it's been really cool. What's the halftime speech from AP last night? Uh, did he say, all right, boys, if you got sacks to get, now's the time. Uh, he picks to get, now's the time. What was the message? Because he was classic coach pissed off we're not done yet yeah. on the sideline. That was kind of nice to see, to be honest with you, because I would have been like, Boys, here we go. We did. Yeah, said, man. we did this thing. Like, what is his coaching style, and what did he say at halftime? Um, you know, his main his main message was just don't let off. You know, keep your foot on the you know keep your foot on the gas, and uh, that was what everyone was preaching because you know it was forty two zero at half, which is nuts. Uh, nuts. But at the same time, like it was only one half of football, and for us, you know, even a couple weeks ago, we played the Chiefs. We're up fourteen zero. Um, and then we don't finish the game well, and we end up losing. And then you got you got the Dolphins game where you know we lose by a touchdown, and we didn't finish the game the way we wanted to. So regardless of the scoreboard, we wanted to just be at our best, you know, from start to finish. And I feel like we did that for the most part. Tell me about Aiden O'Connell. What a hilarious mustache! What a demeanor! Is he like that all the time? And he he has this interesting throwing motion, but he's got an absolute hose. Feels like the boys like him too. Is that an accurate read from outside in? Yeah, no question. We love Aiden. Um, you just see him getting better and better every week. As you see, you know, he's dropping dimes mm -hmm. out there. Um, he's getting more and more comfortable. Um, you know, it's hard. You know, playing quarterback, it's, it's the hardest position in football. And for him, as a young guy coming in halfway through the season and see what he's doing, it's, uh, it's been incredible. So uh, we fully believe in him. We got his back. And, uh, you know, he just he exudes confidence in the locker room. The guys, guys definitely are bought in on it. I love that. What a night for him. Connor has a question for you, Max. Yeah, Max, obviously the situation you guys are in with an interim head coach and you're making a push for the playoffs is very, very similar to the one with Rich Passaccia. Do you sense kind of similar teams between then and now? And is there another added motivation for the players? Because, you know, you want Pierce to be the full-time head coach, so you want to go out there, put, on, put out a good product for the interim job to become the full-time job? Yeah, you know, everybody in this locker room, um, you know, is is basically new, you know, from the last two years. So um, it's basically me and I think Hunter Renfro and maybe a couple others that were here during the Rich Passaccia. Old you know, asses. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it, was a, it was a different era. So, you know, just having us here and guys that have been through that experience, um, that's what we've been preaching to the guys. Be like, listen regardless of what's going on in the outside, like we still have a chance if we come together. And that's what, you know, we preach every day. So, yeah, of course, you know, it's extra motivation. We love AP. We love Champ, you know, as a GM. And um, we want to win. And for me personally, this is my fifth year. I've had four different head coaches. I'm sick of change. I don't want to keep having different coaches every year. Like I want stability and I want this team to win and be successful on a consistent basis. And I feel like AP is exactly what, you know, the Raiders have always needed is just a, a guy that's a full Raider. And uh, he's a Raider to the core, and, and guys are fully bought in on him. And he's a, he's a player, too, so he can relate to us on that level as well. So, yeah, it gives us more motivation. We want to keep winning. And, um, you know, no matter what, like, we're 6-8, and eight, but we're right in the mix of it. Everybody's, um, you know, similar as far as records. There's, like, five teams that are 7-6, and six, a lot of teams at 500. So uh, a lot of things need to, uh, you know, go our way. But, you know, that's exactly what happened a couple years ago. So we're, we're bought in. The AFC sandwich is thick in the middle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Real thick yeah. in the middle. There's a lot of seven, six, six, eight. I mean, there is a lot of humans and teams in that area. Anything is possible for every team. Last question for me before the boys have a, a few more. 
Mark Davis was all over TV last night. He looked so cool. Yeah. yeah. So cool up in his suite. He looks so cool. I don't know water. Pound in water. Yeah. He had eight <laughs> bottles of water yeah. in front of him. And then a coffee, too. I, it was either a coffee or maybe a little Irish coffee. Ooh. Maybe we don't know what he was doing. But the waters in front were telling the world, like, let's remember to hydrate while these boys are kicking some ass. Has he spoke more to the team now post McDaniels uh, leaving? Like, do you guys see him more? Is he, when you guys win, like last night, is he celebrating alongside you guys, talking to anybody? Or is he let AP kind of do his entire uh, business and do all the talking for him? Yeah, you know, you see, you know, it's kind of been the same. Like, Mark, obviously, you know, he'll he'll show face. He'll be around the building here and there, um, but not too often. Uh, he kind of stays behind the scenes. But um, as far as communication with the players, like, that's something that I love about Mark. Like, he's very open. And, like, you know, me and him, we talk all the time. And he talks to Josh. And I know he talks to a lot of the guys. And he just uh, – he, he wants to do what's best for the team. And so we love Mark. You know, I think tonight we're going to go smoke some cigars together um, at 8 Lounge here in Vegas. So uh, we'll wow. have some good conversation and have a good That's time. And find you. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be cool. So, yeah, we love Mark. He's, he's he's the man. Yeah, I shouldn't have said where you guys are going, but maybe go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. But, I, yeah, yeah. It's all good. I had to give it. Uh, my guy Giuseppe over there, the owner. He's uh, he's a great dude. Giuseppe is his name. Hell yeah. Giuseppe Bravo. <laughs> hey, we got we got Sean Stellato joining us in the third hour today. Obviously, uh, agent for Tommy DeVito. He just went into the <laughs> Italian American Sports Hall yep. of Fame. He's getting inducted today, actually. So yeah. shout out to Stellato and Giuseppe over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Italians are awesome. Uh, I saw you smoking that stove last night. On the set there. What type of stoke is it? And is that, we know your story. We know your story. Yeah. Is that your, you're a cigar smoker? And that's like, uh, you're, I don't want to say vice, but is that your thing? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big uh, big cigar smoker. I love cigars. Um, I was smoking a Padron, uh, Padron last night. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great cigar. And, uh, you know, honestly, it's funny. They, you know, I was walking around the locker room. They're trying to grab me to go on the field and talk to the guys. And I was looking for a shirt and, my strength coach AJ was like, "It's like, no, just, just go, just go like you always do." He's like, "Just don't wear a shirt." He's like, "Just be you. Bring your cigar with you. We're good." And I'm like, "All right, screw it." So I just went out in the field and uh, yeah, just did my thing. So that's just me. Hey, let's get the strength coach into the PR world. Yeah, 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 because it looked cool. I mean, that picture of you just hit the internet. Uh, I was like, sweet. "Look at this yeah. asshole! Look at how awesome <laughs> this guy looks after the one of the biggest wins in the history of the NFL. Mm -hmm. 103 years the NFL has been around, Max." That first half score is like the second or third biggest all time. Mm, yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, more, great. hey, great fumbles there. Yeah. Uh, the turnovers go. in that first quarter, we're hunting the ball. We got eyes on the ball. Ty has a question for you, Max. Yeah, speaking of the fumbles, Max, I, I don't know if you've ever played in a game like that in your entire football career where you just beat the ever-loving shit out of someone like that. Five turnovers, two defensive touchdowns. Is that the most fun you've ever had on a football field? And also, you mentioned being six and eight. Like, is that the type of game that really like breaks the seal in the locker room? And it's like, hey, whatever happened in the past, like, doesn't matter. Like, we we are capable and we are right in the mix. Like, does that give you a bunch of confidence, thinking that like, hey, this is a playoff team. Like, we are going to go to the playoffs if we continue to play like we did tonight. Yeah, no question. You know, I feel like in the NFL, it's it's not easy to win, and um. Games like this are, are definitely needed for confidence. And, you know, the mental side of it is the most important thing, you know, especially this time of the year. Everyone's, you know, going through things physically. Um, you know, everyone is, is, is trying to find their way into the playoffs. And um, you get a big win like that on a, on, on a big stage. I feel like the confidence just, you know, goes up to another level. So um, everyone in this building believes in this team. Um, we know we have more than enough ability and more than enough talent. It's just about putting it together and doing it for four quarters. And I feel like everybody got to see that last night. Um, and then on top of it, you know, as far as like you asked about, um, you know, having the, is that the most fun I've ever had? Um, honestly, seeing John Jenkins uh, scooping that and going to the crib was it was probably the coolest, most legendary moment. Um, How much <laughs> did he play? Fuck. What's he at? Three what? That's that's a big boy. You got to ask him because it's you know anywhere from three sixty to three twenty. But he like in the paint, knee drive, arm <laughs> swing, <laughs> touchdown. Yeah. He better get. The, did he get the ball back? Somebody grab that ball for him. I assume. I, I would hope so. Yeah, because that's that's all time. Yeah, have to and with a picture. Yeah, I think yeah. with a picture of mm -hmm. the full running in. I mean, he looked yeah. phenomenal out there. That's when you know you're having a blast. Uh huh. Yep. You know what I mean? That's when we're having a good time. Living. 
guys so. covered the over under in the first half yeah. by yourself for yeah. the entire Easily. game. I mean, what a fun time that had to be. I was on a team that a lot of cardiac situations. I don't think I've ever been on a winning side of one of those. Have you? Is that first, like second half, we're chilling? Not that you're yeah, chilling. Yeah, you I've it. never had a game. I've never had a game in my career where I sat. Like I didn't even. I didn't play in the fourth quarter. Um, that's I've never been a part of that. My whole career with the Raiders has been like close games, down to the wire, heart attack type games. And uh, yesterday was different for sure. So uh, it was just good, and you know, just to see the young guys get to step into at the end and and continue to uh, you know ball out. So. It was, it was a special moment. I fell asleep, uh, so I didn't see you. <laughs> it was a ball. If you, yeah, I, I, I fell asleep. It was tough. Thursday, yeah. we got work. Okay. You know, that's a, yeah. If you guys keep like those that. games close like you normally do, yeah. you know, I get a chance to watch yep. four quarters right. of football here. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Max, follow up on that Jenkins touchdown. Was there a second there that you thought he was going to hand it to you and you were going to score, and then you, but you turned around and said, oh, no one from the Chargers is even trying to pick up this fumble and even tackle us, so we're good there. And then there was also a picture that hit the Jeez. internet last night where uh, your knee looked like you got a pretty nice gash on the same knee that had a balloon in it earlier this week. Did that relieve some pressure? You good there? Yeah. 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 Uh, to answer your first question, um, I seen the ball on the ground, and when Jank came in to scoop it, I was just like literally trying to just be traffic control. I was making sure nobody was coming, and if anybody was running yeah. after him, mm -hmm. I would be there to clear out. But there was nobody coming. Uh <laughs> He was out the gate, so uh, you know I didn't have to do much. But yeah, my knee um, got a nice, got some stitches in it last night. Of course, uh, you know my left leg is definitely taking some damage, but it's a part of the game. It's uh, something we've been <laughs> dealing with, and I just caught a cleat um, and cut my leg open. But I'm all good. It released some pressure for sure. You're listed as questionable, I think. And we literally, as soon as we saw your name next to questionable, it's like, nah, there's not a question yeah. really. Yeah, he's playing. He, yeah, he's going to be playing. <laughs> and you, in your speech, even. After the game, you talked about being banged up, and we just said we got to do this whole thing. Feels like you're not the only human in that locker room that's got like a real dog mentality. Do you feel like you have the group that could potentially do this? I mean, this is a very mentally tough year you'd have to have after a coach getting fired, an entire basic culture transition in this entire, and then to making this run. Like, do you, does it feel like the locker room is right? It looks like it from outside in, but like, do you feel that way? And do you all kind of recognize that? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, you got guys like Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers. Like, there's so many guys that I can go on and name our entire D-line. Like, you can see Malcolm Kuntz is taking that next step and elevating his game every week. And, you know, John Jenkins and Adam Butler. And, you know, it's just I can go on and on. But, um, yeah, you know, we know we have the guys in the locker room. It's just about being consistent and putting it together for four quarters. And last night was an example of that. If we go and do that on a consistent basis, we can go and compete and beat anybody. So um, we know that. Um, we know, you know, the odds are stacked against us, but I feel like that's where we thrive. And, um, you know, we just got to keep taking it one week at a time. We have some extra time off. Our, our next game is, um, you know, in 11 days from now or 10 days against the Chiefs on Monday night. So, Christmas Day game is going to be it's going to be a huge one. We gotta we gotta be at our best. Another division rival opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the rest of the day look like? We get another tattoo, maybe on our face. We go in cold tub. What do we got? <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I got some uh, pool work, uh, getting some treatment, getting a massage, getting the body right, and uh, yeah, get off my feet a little bit. All right, enjoy your cigars tonight. Enjoy your weekend, and enjoy a historic dub last night that got two people fired. Hope you're happy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Las Vegas Raider legend, host of The Rush with Max Crosby. Max Crosby. Yeah. His podcast is good. He's a good talker. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Transparent. Yeah. yeah. They they really might go. If they can beat the Chiefs, then uh, you could see him going to the playoffs making some damage. Yeah, in the AFC... You know, you start exactly. looking around like the Buffalo Beals. Mm -hmm. They get a win over the Chiefs because of the lineup issue at the end. Pretty now, granted, could the Bills come back and win there? Maybe. Sure. We're not. There's a chance. We're not saying that it it didn't happen, but it certainly could have been a little bit more of an exciting ending there uh, in that yeah. particular game. But like, you feel like their momentum's up, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's a couple. You feel like the Ravens are up. The Dolphins, you're a little worried about. Yeah, a little bit. Just and now we live in a "What have you done for us lately?" Mm -hmm. society, and I hate that. And I do apologize that that is literally our profession. But it's when you live and die with every single rumor and story, in any little drop of ink about something, you could potentially ride the wave. But it's like Raiders feel good. Yes. Yeah. Ravens feel good. For sure. Bills feel good. Broncos. Bengals. Joey Flacco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, all those teams, it looks like, are going to play each other, too. It's not like these wild-card teams are just 
Like, oh. I think a majority oh. of them. And you think to yourself, like, backup quarterback, no good? It's like, well, they're going to have to be. Yes. Because yeah. there's going to be teams in the playoffs that are going to have backup quarterbacks. For which sure. is how this is going to go with the, how this season has gone in that position. Five of the seven uh, playoff teams that are currently in the playoffs in the AFC lost last week. So, that's nuts. Here we go. It's going to get hectic. Here we go. And then on the NFC side. People are saying the Eagles are dead. I got some interesting uh, stats from Hembo. Yeah, okay. I saw a couple. I got, an inter- I got some interesting ones from Hembo about this Eagles team. And it feels like he's really – so, like, I- I'll get these stats sent to me. Here's all the Eagles ones, okay? Yep. A couple of scrolls. And then there's other teams down here just a little bit. Okay. So he's just like, hey, just okay. want you to uh, – High on Here's it. some Eagles stuff. Uh, Jalen Hurts has been zero blitzed, okay? Six-plus pass rushers is what that means. He explained. Thank you for that. 55 times. Nine more than any quarterback. On those plays, he has a QBR of 25.9, Ooh. which ranks 27th amongst 29 qualifiers. Okay. So Yikes. they're bringing it. So him having the hots, you know, I guess yep. not really working out. Whenever they get some actual pressure on him, that offense last year that was cooking so much isn't able to cook. There is a massive difference in rushing success for the Eagles whenever they have Goddard on the field, though. So the run game should get going True. now that he's back. The Eagles' offense is also really not creating anything from a scheme-wise. Their 20, uh, 22% pass game is from play action. That's 28th in the NFL. 44% of pass yardage comes from Yak. That's 28th in the NFL. Mm. Use of motion, 25% of snaps. That's the lowest in the NFL. Damn. Play action and yards after catch creating way down from last year. Motion never really what they do, as the world knows, is what Hembo went on to say. So a lot of this stuff that we're seeing other teams do to make their offense hum and run, the Eagles aren't really doing or having much of it this season, which is vastly different than last year. Uh, no defense in the NFL plays man worse than the Eagles do, says Hembo. Yes. And this is not me. This is, mm-hmm. inter- this is numbers and data and analytics. 79.5 QBR and 22 touchdowns versus three interceptions when the Eagles play man. Last year, they ranked fourth. This year, vastly Different. Eagles third down sacks through 13 games. This season they have nine. Last season they had 26. Wow. Jeez. That's a, that's a big that, difference. That's absurd. That is a vastly, vastly, vastly different thing. Last two games, Philly has allowed 354 yards after catch on 585 yards total. They can't tackle. Debo's been saying that. Eagles can't get off the field. Their opponents have run 75 more plays than they have in the last six games. What the Jeez, hell? They're just pounding them. Yeah. They're just pounding the defense. <laughs> James Bradbury in 2022 had a 54 QBR rating allowed in three touchdowns against them. 2023, 108 QBR rating against them. Eight touchdowns. Man. Jimmy. Hertz took more 25-yard shots for than throws at or behind the line of scrimmage last night uh, from their last game. And, uh, yeah, that's why everything just doesn't look good. And then 20-point wins this season on the NFC side. Cowboys have eight of them. 49ers have four of them. The Eagles haven't won a game by more than 14 points yet. So that just kind of wraps up the interesting stats from Hembo oh. there about the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. So when everybody was just ruling out the Eagles as one of the top teams in the NFC, even though their record is 10-3, mm-hmm. and three, they look at a lot of things like that. Those are some eye-openers about what the hell is going on in Philly. Well, you lose your offense coordinator. Yeah. You lose your defense coordinator. Mm. And I'm not saying these two aren't the answer. I'm just saying maybe they have to find their way a little bit, and maybe they'll still be able to catch their stride. But when you look at the offense's lack of creativity and the defense's lack of opportunity and turning the ball over or getting off the field, it's like that's not a good recipe for success in 2022, 2023, right. especially with how top-heavy this NFC seems to be. Yeah, it's weird, too, because Hembo uh, tweeted something last night about the teams, and I believe it was the Eagles have had the hardest schedule. Oh, yeah, here it is. The Cowboys, Ravens, and Niners all have, or sorry, just the Cowboys and Ravens have easier schedules. Niners and Eagles have much, much tougher ones, and they still have 10 wins. You would kind of think that Sirianni maybe went into his like Andy Reid bag and thought to himself, like, hey, all these motions, we're going to save them. We're going to save them for when we need them because we know we can beat a lot of these teams without using what we used last year because 
it's hard to imagine, at least from my perspective, I don't know how Eagles fans feel, that like Miles Sanders is a much, much, much better running back than DeAndre Swift because last year Miles Sanders was a 1,000-yard rusher. This year Swift, I mean, he didn't come into the season as the guy, but then he had that breakout game versus the Vikings, and just they haven't really been the same, at least from the running back rushing. A lot of the running, their rushing yards are from Jalen Hurts. Yeah, it's uh, and he's banged up, I think, with a yeah. knee or whatever. Yeah, yeah. let's, let's go to the Dallas Cowboys now in the NFC. Here Some interesting know. stats from him. Since the 49ers game where Dallas did not play well, Dak has 15 touchdowns and zero interceptions versus man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can't play man against Dallas Cowboys, which changes everything else for the defense, pretty much. Can't have as many people in the box because you got to have safeties over top. you got to drop in the zone coverage, which means you can run a rock a little bit. You have a little openings. And with that amount of weapons they have, including Jake Ferguson, who's become yeah. a guy for yes. them, not just catching the ball, but also they're saying he's got a little sauce, a little yeah. seasoning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got, they love Jake Ferguson. Yeah, mm -hmm. rightfully so. And he he was the one, you know, like going into this year, they were basically saying how them not re-signing Dalton Schultz, like that was a backbreaker. Like what are these guys doing? And he's unbelievable, or at least he has been for the last like eight weeks. We hear the D-line talk about him in mic'd up segments. They love him. Incredible. And then you hear like commentators talk about him. They're like, uh, Ferguson's like the fight starter for the Cowboys. He's mm -hmm. he's brand new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's brand new. And they're talking about it. Good on you. Yeah. Good on you, Ferguson. Weapon. You, you quickly, quickly were – have become a legend in that locker room, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and he's great at football. Yeah. I mean, he's absolutely great at football. And if you have that there and C.D. Lamb available, mm -hmm. you just if you have those two things, there's been a lot of teams that have had a, a lot of success whenever you just have a great wide receiver and a great tight end, let alone everything else that they have, if Tony Pollard can do his thing. And, I mean, Dak's playing his best football. Mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy's in his bag. Bad. It's like the Dallas Cowboys. O line. It's not just the offense either, though. Let's go to the defense. 88 takeaways in 47 games under Dan Quinn's leadership of the defense. Holy shit. 88 takeaways, 47 games. What? Those are good ratios. Those are good numbers. Those are extra possessions to give back to Mike McCarthy that the other team doesn't get. It's awesome. The Cowboys seem to be flying high. And then the 49ers, we don't have any stats for. Oh, sorry. But you can just see it. Yeah, East Coast buyers. They're good. Yep. East Coast buys from Hembo. Mm -hmm. I think he's from New York. Mm -hmm. Of course. He said, uh, we're on. Nah, cares. these New Yorkers. Thank you, Hembo. We appreciate you. Philly, Philly, Hembo. You, Hembo. Philly versus the man thing is the most surprising. Well, kind of, the, and them getting pressure because they have basically the same D-line as last year except for Harvard. You're talking about Philly versus zero or Dallas versus man? <clears throat> Philly versus zero because, yeah. I mean, like, with the wideouts that they have, especially, like, A.J. Brown, like, you Devontae. get him and, I know, uh, you get A.J. Brown and man, he one, bre one broken tackle. Like that, and Devontae being the incredible route runner that he, that is super surprising. Yeah, because Devontae, I mean, that's easy. Hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We go to uh, Devontae, the guy that can get open. Bingo. I mean, that was Edelman, Amendola. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Uh, for the Colts, it was Austin Colley for a bit, Marv, Red. Like, if you could just get a guy that could mm -hmm. just get open, boom, we're good. We're coming, ball's coming out quick. Mm -hmm. Fascinating that that's how that's become, but first year offense coordinator. True. 10 and 3, hard to schedule. Yeah. Let's see what they do the rest of the way. That's right. Well, and then you also look at how successful Steichen's been. It's like, hey, this guy is pretty good. Yeah, very good. Like, was a huge piece. Yeah, we assume Steichen had a little bit of say in some things that were taking place. And uh, we, yeah. as Indianapolis Colts fans, are very thankful he's here. Yeah. Yes. He didn't have his number one running back, best player on the offense, mm -hmm. for a large portion of this season. Still don't right now. Mm -hmm. It's hurt. Yep. Don't have your number four overall pick, franchise quarterback. So you basically your two best players on offense. Not there. Also, didn't really get a chance to learn the offense, Jonathan Taylor, because he wasn't in training camp, and AR is not getting to play this year. So it's like going to be held up a little bit going into next year as well. Doesn't matter. At all. How do we win games? Unless we're playing Jake Browning. Well, yeah. Oh, well. that Cincinnati Bengals team. <laughs> we couldn't stop the damn screen in Cincinnati. Cincinnati Bengals fans, how'd they feel this week after we chatted about what Zach Taylor had to say? And I do worry a little bit because I saw Josh Allen giving a motivational speech to his his fans as well. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I thought maybe this was potentially like a sponsored question. Like, hey, can you give a shout out? I hope so. I hope it is. Yeah, but that's a bad advertisement. I know? agree. That's a bad one. They well, what, like, Acting like the Cincinnati Bengals fans need a a, a, a lesson on how to become a fan. Yeah. They don't need that, well, right? No, no that's what we're not. saying. That's what we were so surprised by. The Bills too. Like that's why I used to get so pissed off when like Lafleur would be like trying to pump up the crowd Shh. on the sideline. It's like, hey, guess what? We're in the playoff hunt right now. Like you, you don't you don't need any more extra motivation. Like fans are going to be loud. They're excited for the game. Like they're going to do their part. They'll show up and do their part. You don't need to remind them to come up and, and I think do Zach their part. Taylor was set up. It, 
And we said that I was there's a chance he yeah. was set up here. Well, that's even worse. Yeah, what is he, a big dumb doofus now? Exactly. How's he getting set up? I think is he was just good intentions trying to talk to the fans. Yeah. I think he was just trying to send a message of appreciation. Yeah, but he, that is, it really, he like knows. thinking about it like that, like he has his finger on the pulse. He goes to the bar Bingo. after after playoff games. Like, why Cincinnati he, Bengals fans are not happy with us just stating the facts that that was a weird thing. That, very, that well, coach had to he say. basically said, hey, if you. we have to go play in Minnesota, there's no way we're going to win. And then could you imagine Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh coming out and saying, all right, when Renegade comes on, Need you to sing it, <laughs> yell, spin the Play towel. The time, going. Uh, third downs need you to be loud. Like Cincinnati fans, you'd be like, Steelers don't, yeah, Pittsburghers yeah. don't know football. Mm -hmm. That's like the first reaction. But we have been invited to Cincinnati Bengals games by a lot of the people over there since we reacted to said interview. A lot of people said we missed the mark. Uh, that guy. Who's setting the mark? Because <laughs> when I watched that, the marks, you guys were being told how to be Fans. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. So that's what I saw. But I think he was bamboozled into saying that due to something else. I have been to Steelers game at that stadium. It's a very, very fun time. They have a really cool area uh, between the, the baseball stadium and the football stadium. It's a good time. Uh, Talking about Paycor? <clears throat> it is Paycor, yeah. Yep. The jungle. Not my choice when I'm going to, you know, payroll software. But, you know, sure. I guess you got to do it. You, you do gotta... a lot of that these days? You got a lot of payroll it's software? A, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done it. But, you know, just, you know. Wouldn't go there. Old habits die hard. Yeah, dust off yeah. the old keyboard. Which one? What, what would be your uh, ADP? Automatic data processing. They uh, oh, they do one out of every, hell? every six paychecks in the United States of America. I wanted to do something fun here at the end of this first hour of the Feel Let's Good Friday, it. where I get to be in studio. How here. about it? Huh? It's pretty cool. How's it feel? Feels great. It's like weird almost. It's been three feels, months. Yeah, it feels really good to yeah. be here. Uh, you know, got a chance to see the baby this morning. Nice. How about it. That was yeah. fun. Yep. The wife feeling great, okay. which is good mm -hmm. after last weekend, and dogs, and took a shower. I mean, it was just wild. It was really nice. <laughs> yeah. This is re this is really nice. And then after the show, getting a chance to go, yeah, bingo, just, just back to your house. Back yeah, to house. really nice. Yeah, don't have to look over anything. It's really yeah. Don't have to learn. Yeah. You know, don't right. show. Have to learn. You know, backup quarterback for a team that obviously I knew was having a great run. Yeah, sure. I knew that. It's like trying to shine a spotlight on things, but if I get one name pronounced wrong, mm -hmm. that fan base is going to be incredibly pissed that I don't know ball, Yep. which they're right, I guess. I apologize. So that's what my Friday nights are normally. Yes. I'll get a nice thing, to, something to eat in the area, and then I go back to my room, and for four hours, basically, I am just trying to learn every human's name possible, proper announcement, proper pronunciation, right. where they're from, yep. how they've done, watch some film on them, how they're doing, how, and then go to the next one. So that's my Friday. Pretty pumped that that isn't happening today. Oh, yeah. Me too. I can imagine. It, but tomorrow morning I will miss, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll probably be odd not, too. Not walking out and seeing, you know, and doing mm -hmm. the whole thing. It's a fun little task, the college game day. And by little, I mean like there's a lot that goes into that whole lot, for show. sure show. And there's a lot of humans that work on that show who are great people behind the scenes yes. and everything. We will certainly all be bummed out that we're not sharing our time together and working together because that's a good team over there. But I'm pretty pumped to be sleeping in my bed tonight. Yeah, I am, doubt, pretty, yeah. I am pretty pumped to be sleeping in there. But for this Feel Good Friday, I want to do a little doing? thing where, uh, you know, I, I, I get a chance to learn from you guys. Sure. Right? Okay. I want, let's do a weekly roundup. Okay. Ooh. Rumor roundup. Oh, Ooh, like that. A weekly rumor roundup. Okay. That sounds like a good name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tone Diggs, what was your favorite rumor that happened this week in the sports world that we had to cover and talk about because it was real and we actually had to chit-chat about it? Um, I saw one actually just recently, today, yeah. that we haven't had a chance to talk about. Ooh, okay. All right. It's the first time doing a second. Yeah. It was, <laughs> as you were saying, I said, oh, no. But um, there was... <laughs> As I was continuing what? to yeah. go on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but there was... Uh, actually, there was something that we did kind of talk about earlier this week, and it was the Miami Dolphins players only meeting, which wasn't actually a players yes, only meeting. Yes, that was Ooh. fun. Um, yep. But there was another one that came out just like late last night or yesterday that the Eagles had a players only meeting, and this players only meeting was strictly to tell Jalen Hurts to hold on to the ball and stop fumbling. And then there was practice footage that came out of oh, Jalen yeah. Hurts just... Falling repeatedly on the ground. Yep. Uh, so that was that was my favorite rumor of the week because that just feels like the players probably wouldn't have it at players only meeting just to yell at Jalen to hold on to the football. 
Yeah, this uh, the video that has hit the internet of them working on ball security drills uh, where you're falling with the ball with a string on it so they're trying to pull it out from there. And then you obviously got mop, uh, mops taped up so you can uh -huh. punch it mm -hmm. from the backside and it's soft so you won't get hurt. But this team has turned the ball over a lot. Yes. A lot. I think it was like six fumbles, 11 interceptions for Jalen Hurts or whatever. It look like he loved doing this drill. I don't man. think anybody on that team probably loved it. <laughs> they're 10-3, the and three too. They'll probably ask a lot of questions. We have... The best record in football right now, and uh, we're doing this. Is anybody else doing this? That's the questions they're asking. But all this is is them saying, if you don't want to do this drill, stop turning the ball over. Hold on to it. Sirianni told him, I don't want to do this drill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This makes us look like a high school football team. Mm -hmm. The fact that we got to tell professionals, hey, tighten up on the ball. We don't like it. But we've gotten to a point now where we have to do something because we got to be coaches. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to cover our ass in this entire thing. So wait until you see the ball security drill we're doing today. We got six balls tied up to strings. Equipment managers did this. We got mops taped up. Uh -huh. You guys will be hanging because they got to describe the drill before they go out and do uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to hold on to the ball, and there's going to be a sh somebody yanking on the string from the front side. Then there's going to be mops and bang, banging it from the sideline as if it's somebody coming in. And then you guys... Front bump on your face. Yep. Just down, hold on to it. Boom. Okay? Because that ball can't be coming out. We got to make sure we hit all the way to the ground before the ball comes out. You know, Jalen, you're like this far away. If your legs were a little weaker, we probably uh -huh. don't have that fumble. But hmm. instead, you're able to levitate a little bit longer. Ball comes out. No more of that on our watch. So that's what we're leading right. practice with. And yeah. I would assume nobody on that team was happy. And guess, yeah, yeah, like you just said. And guess when we're doing it? Media portion. Okay? Media yep. needs to know we're doing this. Yep. Everybody. And you know why I'm doing it? Because they think I'm a big, dumb dipshit from exactly. my first ever press conference. Yeah. And they think <laughs> we're not working on it. We are working on it. Uh, Ty, how about you? Favorite rumor of the week or something that happened this week in the sports Yeah, world? so I do have another one just in case uh, Connor uses the same one. I want to steal his thunder. And I think it's probably for the opposite reason. But, listen, I love trades in the NFL. I love at the start of the season seeing, you know, a big-time superstar. Wow, this guy's wearing a different uniform. This looks cool. This is neat. I love this. Tommy Curran saying that Bill Belichick is out of the building. I am so fixated. I want to see Bill Belichick coach a different team next year. You know, Patriots you son fans. Of a bitch. Patriots fans, I'm sorry. I know that that's. Well, no, some weird. Patriots fans. Yeah, so, some are on board with that. I just think it would be incredibly. Not the one he knows. Incredibly cool. Incredibly so, cool. That would be cool. So cool. It'd be just so cool. And it would then, be cool. And now today. It's almost like the red carpet has been rolled yep. from Los Angeles, rolled all the way across the country. To, to Foxborough, Massachusetts. And let Bill walk. His. The whole way. Exactly. Let him walk the way. Because he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll, you know, if he parts ways at the end of the season. And I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more for a quarterback. Uh, con man, your favorite rumor of the week? So mine actually is an NFL. So hey. it wasn't, it wasn't even that. Uh, this, this one comes from the NBA, specifically Stephen A. Smith. Um, okay. Stephen A. Smith said that he has heard that the chefs in New Orleans have been <laughs> clamoring to get Zion True. into their restaurant. And the word on the street, per Stephen A. Smith, is that Zion Williamson will eat the table. Uh, that was so that was reported had, this week. That, yeah. that was my favorite rumor, just because the image of Zion eating a wooden table has kind of taken over. <laughs> I'll tell you... Sports world is awesome. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Never, ever stops. Obviously, we're not curing any of the world's issues, but we are trying to bring everybody together. And in doing so, there's some absurd shit that happened, yeah. like this particular program. We're incredibly thankful that you hang out with us every single week. And in the next hour, we got Coach Nick Saban, wow. AJ Hawk, what? Coach Artie Smith. What? We'll see you in about three. Goodbye. There is a crowd of about 30 people moving through the back end of the business field here. And in the middle of it is this black Samoan man who has become the most famous human on earth. Great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the GOAT, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. There's thousands. of people skipping class to come see your big ass. Listen, there is thousands and thousands of you skipping class. It doesn't matter if they go to class. Moana is one of the best animated films of all time. What? Okay, can't, can't wait for the live action. Thank you, yes. But we, you're welcome. We talk about Moana. What can I say except you're welcome? 
and we talk about mana. Honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. <laughs> the tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was my way just messing around. I couldn't even let it bury its guts. Sprouted the tree, now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with my way when he's on a breakaway. <gasps> and the temperature here on my skin <gasps> is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been to make everything happen. Look at the me, 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 my way just ticket it happen. That's it. Wow. <laughs> On the Samoan side, Polynesian side, we have a word called mana. Mana is spirit, mana is power, mana comes from in here. It's the thing that gives you goosebumps, it's that thing you feel, it's that thing when I walked out and we felt this thing, this yeah. is mana. Yeah. mana. This is mana. 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 It, mana. It's very, very, very real and you could feel it. Wow. Little things like I don't get driven anywhere, I don't want to get driven anywhere, I don't like chauffeurs. Keeps me in my way, just a little grounded, like yes. I could drive myself everywhere and not telling some guy, hey, take me here, take me there. That is something I'm going to start saying like, yeah, because when they open you your door, you feel so bad. I can open my own door, dude. They're trying to be courteous, it's their job. But also, the day I stop opening my own door is the day I become big old bitch. Here we go. That's a big cup. Oh. Oh. Here's the iconic sound, you guys know it. Oh! This special Terramana toast goes out to Passion. Congratulations on your show. Very proud of you, very proud of all you boys. And to all of you. I love you guys, thank you for the support. Keep kicking ass. Cheers. In my world, when I sit down and we're talking about movies and all this other shit, it's never this. It's never this, this, back with the boys, and you. So, I appreciate it, and this one's to you. Thank this you, boys. Thank you, pal. Cheers. You. Cheers. All right, we're going to take five-minute break here. Oh, hold on, one more. If you smell what the rock. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this feel good, Coach Saban Friday, December 15th, 2022, out. Program, just 2000. That's on me. It's all right. I almost want to go back to the beginning, but we can't now because there's a lot of people in airports and such that are watching the screen <laughs> and seeing what's happening. But it is 2023. It is December 15th. It is Ooh. a feel good Friday. And Coach Saban will be joining us in a matter of moments. The talks table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt's sweet wolf shirt for the third day in a row. Yeah, actually, uh, kind of ha forgot I had this one. Found it at the bottom of a pile. Uh, had a warning yet, said, I'll bring this one. My so it's kind of like uh, good yeah. versus evil here. Yeah, it's kind of like. So there's some story about uh, these two wolves. Wolf gods in uh, Greek mythology. Hell yeah. or, uh, I believe I now learned about this in God of War video game. Okay. I forget. It's basically uh, their version of yin and yang. Oh. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Kratos. Yeah, I got you. Uh, one half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And joining us live from an attic in Ohio is a Super Bowl champion, a college football national champion, right. a Ryder Cup winner, mm -hmm. COVID survivor, father of 10, A.J. Hawk. Hey, hey, AJ. Hey. AJ, historic ass beaten last night on Prime uh, by the Raiders of the Chargers. Chargers have since fired their head coach and general manager. Your thoughts on the last 12 hours for the Los Angeles Chargers? Yeah, not, uh, not surprising to hear the news uh, about Coach Staley and the GM obviously getting let go. I just wonder how that flight home was, how everything was, like post-game in the locker room, all of that I'm, I'm very curious about. But, yeah, just – like you guys said, just roll out the red carpet for Bill and send him on over. Well, we don't know if that is the case. Son of a bitch. A lot of very hard decisions have to be made by a lot of people. A full conversation between Bob Kraft 
and Bill Belichick. That was filthy. Yeah. That was absolutely filthy right there. Obviously, that's in the fourth quarter. And you can get some stats in those types of games because people start, you know, getting a little lazadaisical. Yep. Yep. Whenever that happens, (laughs) shot to Zion, whenever that happens, you know, you can maybe steal some sacks, maybe a pick six, especially whenever stuff starts popping off going the wrong way and the football gods are clearly blessing your team. This happened a week ago. Brandon Staley had this to say about his team whenever he was asked about losing the locker room and his messaging not finding its way home. Brandon, I mean, there's so many close losses that it's kind of the you can compare and said kind of similar things about you know, things that went one way, things that went the other way. Do you do you still feel like your messaging is hitting to people, to the you know members of this team, and still coming across? Yeah. Otherwise, you'd get blown out of the stadium. You know, sure. in one of these games, you'd get blown out of the stadium, and that hasn't happened. We've been tight with well, the best in the league, and um, the way we've practiced, you would know. Up and the way that our guys compete in the game. So um, we're going to have to continue to make adjustments to close these games out and play a cleaner game in all three phases. This is real. Um, This is real. This is AI. This is not heaven. And and we're going to be tested moving forward, and that's a fact. This is real. real. That's a real deal. And then literally, what, four days later, just – Blown out of stadium in the first half. Yeah. Killed. That's tough. Obviously, the seat has been very hot for Staley for a long time. He's probably felt that both internally and externally. There's probably a, a little bit of relief potentially on this particular day because when a big bad wolf is potentially hunting you all the time, inevitably – it's going to get there, especially yeah. if it's going the way it continues to go. He's on his third string quarterback. Keenan Allen, their best weapon, isn't in there. The defense obviously isn't stopping much, and you just get your ass kicked on prime time. I think he understood it was coming. The Tom Telesco firing midseason, that's also a mm-hmm. wild move. Tom Telesco is the reason why I am in the NFL. He was the one that was down at the Monarchy Car Care Bowl with Bill Poley and staff and saw me punting in warmups and said, you know, I think this guy could be our punter if we're going to go get another punter. So I am very grateful for Tom Telesco. Uh, I assume both of these gentlemen will find other jobs, but now a brand new vision is in place for the Chargers is what Dean Spano said. And I know you just said it like the red carpet from Foxborough to LA, but like two jobs have to be filled now. That's not easy. It's tough to get one of those right, let alone two of them. But Justin Herbert's obviously going to be a big draw for them whenever it comes to candidates, AJ. Yeah, I mean, that's why I think it's an enticing job. Not only do you have talent all over the defense when you look at it, but you have Justin Herbert there at the quarterback position. Right there, that's the first thing. If you want to be a head coach, you think, okay, who's the quarterback? Who do I have to work with there? And then we'll kind of build out uh, when you look at everyone else. And I think Justin Herbert is – he's definitely – does anyone question that he – I know they paid him to be the franchise guy. No one's questioned yeah. that Justin Herbert's not the guy, are they? Inside the building, outside the building, I don't think anybody wonders. But we do wonder who they'll find to get the job done for him. Maybe – You know, if they could find somebody like this next man, the L.A. Chargers would be the team of L.A. Joining us now, seven-time national champion, by all accounts, the greatest college football coach of all time, friend of the program, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of Alabama, Nick Saban. How are we doing today, guys? How are you doing? 17 days away from the Rose Bowl. How are we doing right now? How's life? We recruiting? We coaching? What do we got going on today, coach? Well, we've been recruiting for the last two weeks, but today everybody's off the road, so we're really using it as a planning day uh, to get ready, and we start practicing tomorrow. Uh, players have done a good job of working out on their own and with the strength and conditioning coaches for the last couple of weeks, so uh, we start getting ready today. Okay, so tomorrow when you guys get back on the field for practice, is it technique, fundamentals, or are we implementing plan for Michigan? You know, you guys are underdogs. Yeah. Yep. Underdogs. You don't want to hear it, obviously. Who cares what sports books say? But underdogs in the Rose Bowl after a huge win over Georgia. Are we techniques, fundamentals, or are we working on Michigan immediately? We go three days. First three days of practice is sort of like fundamental camp practices. Uh, where we try to get guys, you know, back in the groove. You know, one of the big things in bowl games, especially when you've had some time off, is getting the techniques right. Tackling uh, is a big thing in bowl games uh, because guys haven't played for a while. So we spend three days on that. And then uh, after three days, then we'll go through a regular week here and do the same thing once we get out there. Uh, what I used to do is tackling drills, you know. Mm-hmm. You used to have to really drive your feet, make sure mm-hmm. you get, you know, super physical coach. You know what I mean? No missed tackles out of this particular punter kicker. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, how important is all these uh, extra practices for some of your younger, less experienced guys that haven't had a ton of game action? I would assume, I know coaches that 
smaller programs at times, they use it and they think it's very, very valuable to get padded practices for young people. Are you kind of using that uh, in the same way? Well, especially in these first three days. I mean, once you get past these first three days, you gotta got to get back to coaching the guys that can play in the game. Uh, you know, one of the new rules that I think is really good for young guys is, you know, you can actually come to bowl practice now if you're a, a you know, mid, mid-year mid graduate that's starting school in January. Uh, so we'll have some of those guys in here. It'll be a good experience that for them to get acclimated uh, to what, you know, college practice is like, college preparation is like, fundamentals, you know, scheme, all that type of thing. But, you know, once we get past these first three days, we got to focus pretty much on the guys that can play in the game. But there is a lot of fundamental work that the young guys get because they're practicing much better than if they're not out there practicing for, I think we'll have 11 or 12 practices for this game. What's the reports out of the weight room over the last couple of weeks from the boys? We a healthy team? We stronger than we were at the beginning of the season? Because sometimes, you know, at the beginning of the season, you're in the best shape you've been in because you had all summer, you had all off-season workout, and then during the season, you get beat up, you're not able to do it. What's the report out of the weight room for the boys? Good. Everything's good. You know, there's so much technology now in terms of being able to monitor guys, explosive movement, speed. I know we got catapult on everybody. We know if guys are losing speed. Uh, we know if their explosive power and strength is staying where it needs to be. So we have a baseline on every player. And obviously, this two weeks, you know, get some players back to where they need to be. So it's been good. But they've had a great attitude, worked hard. And our strength guy here, you know, Dave Ballou, does a fantastic job. And players relate well to him. And I think that's really important when they have to work out on their own. Strength coach, maybe the most important person in the entire building, outside of the head coach, obviously, but strength coach is with the players the most, right? And also your culture setterer? And no doubt. That's very, very important. You know, that guy's, you know, like we're recruiting for the last two weeks, so those guys are really managing our team from a psychological disposition standpoint, work ethic standpoint, discipline to do things the right way. So, uh and they're with them more than maybe the coaches are, especially in the offseason. Yeah. Mike Barwis was our strength coach. And I, I, I'd never lifted a weight before, so that was the first time I'd been in the gym. That was quite a uh, baptism by fire situation. But then you quickly realize, like, this guy genuinely wants my best interest, and I'm going to be with him every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to puke a lot through this entire yeah. thing. What a weapon if you have a good one. Sounds like you obviously do. Tone has a question for you, Coach. Coach, you're no stranger to this layoff, being in the playoffs so many times. Um, but because of because you've been in it so many times, it is, is it an advantage? Like, and how long did it take you, and how many things did you change from the first time you had this long of a layoff until now? And do you like the, this long, this much time or dislike it? And then next year, I mean, with the playoff format, it's it's going to be shortened down. So are you happy about that, just the whole layoff? Well, I, I think that I've learned a lot through the years. Um, you know, in the very beginning when I was a head coach, especially at Michigan State, I think we lost five straight bowl games or something. We used to try to practice our way to the game. In other words, we'd practice a couple of days, go recruiting a few days, practice a couple of days. So everything got sort of stretched out for a whole month when you're playing in a bowl game or something. And when we adopted the philosophy that, you know, it's more like a one game season and look at it that way and just let the players work on their own for a couple of weeks, do some simulated training, do some stuff to keep them in shape for what they need to do. Uh, but when you start practicing, actually be able to practice for the game and have those 11 or 12 practices to get ready to go. And I think psychologically, it's a lot better for players because I actually do think you can practice too much and you can practice too long for the same opponent. Yeah, paralysis by over-analysis mm. happens absolutely everywhere. Speaking of over-analysis, saw a photo of you, Connor, has a question. Yeah, Coach, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but your best recruiting may have you know, come from a photo of you in a Ferrari with your triple styrofoam cup and America's Best being <laughs> absolutely littered in your side door. Uh, if you weren't aware of that, just know, yeah, everyone's talking about it, absolutely loving it. Here's one of the videos. I assume that's one of your six, seven, eight Ferraris. <laughs> it looks amazing. Did you? Were you aware? of that photo kind of going viral a little bit and did you know that you probably got about five five stars committing to your school today because of it i don't know they all want to drive it but uh, <laughs> look i got kind of hoodwinked into that you know one of the guys that was visiting we always have the players over to the house for breakfast on sunday morning and we walk out and they see the car and they all 
you know, ooh and all about the car. And they said, why don't you start it up so we can see what it sounds like? So I went and got the keys and started it up. I didn't know the guy was going to video it and it was going to go viral. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Yeah. You know, I, we have the parents over on Saturday night, so they would have been much more interested if they'd have caught me line dancing. <laughs> I've seen you in some living rooms. I've seen you in some living rooms, Cooper shuffling out there. You got some rhythm, huh? West Virginia boy got a little rhythm. And the triple styrofoam cup. Ooh. I mean, across all demographics, that was yeah. beloved. You know, because that's either lean, which we assume it's not, <laughs> or that is a – that mm -hmm. is. And so, I mean, Coach, I, the more we learn about you – I think the more we love you. Yes. And that need, you need to understand that. I, I assume you've been very guarded for a long time because you're ultra competitive and everything like that. And whenever you said you would come and do this show every single week, a lot of people said things like, oh, he's not his fault. It's like, people love you, coach. You know that because you're still that same West Virginia boy who just mm -hmm. so happens to be the greatest of all time. It's a cool thing. We're very grateful for that this year. Well, you know, some of the things I learned growing up in West Virginia in a coal mining town have been very beneficial to, you know, getting to know how, how to really talk to, uh, articulate with, communicate with, you know, everybody, no matter where they come from, what their social economic background is, uh, because there's a lot of good people in West Virginia. And I learned a lot of good lessons growing up and obviously being in competitive sports since the time I was nine years old, I had some great coaches and good mentors and they all helped. Yeah. Well, they did a good job. Yep. They did a good job. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, what do you see when you, when you're preparing for this Michigan team that you'll be playing in the Rose Bowl? Like we know obviously undefeated everything they've done throughout the year, but when you actually study them and watch them, what kind of challenges do they present? Well, they're a really good team. You know, they're very aggressive on defense, but uh, offensively they use a lot of personnel groups. They run the ball very effectively. The quarterback's a really efficient player. Uh, they got some really good skill guys. Uh, number 18, the tight end, is kind of a mismatch guy, a little bit like Georgia's guy. So uh, they present a lot of challenges based on formations, motions, movements, and all that type of thing. And uh, they do a good job on defense, and uh, they stunt. And, you know, you got to be ready for uh, where these guys are going to be coming from all the time. So uh, preparation, I think, is the key uh, because it's going to be a little bit different than anybody we played against all year. Hey, in the barn already for the studying of Michigan as an opponent, or are we still learning, watching, everything like that? No, we're, we're really just learning and watching. This is a planning day-to-day, -day, so we've used all day-to-day -to, -day to sort of try to zero in uh, even though when you're on the road recruiting with the technology that we have now, you know, you can watch this stuff when you're in the plane and all that type of thing. So we've done quite a bit of that, but this is the first day we've been together as a staff sort of planning it all. And we'll use these next three days to do that quite a bit as we're practicing fundamentals. What's that look like? Are we giving presentations in this meeting? Like uh, offense coordinator comes up, tells the, everybody else in the coaching staff what they've learned, and then defense coordinator does the same thing. Is that what those meetings look like? And how long are those? normally um you know i think one thing you don't want to do is do a bunch of stuff that your players aren't familiar with um so you think you're going to change a lot of things and create a lot of problems but at the same time you create a lot of problems for yourself so um but we have everyone on the staff has something that they're really looking at and they need to become expert in that particular whether it's goal line short yardage some part of the game red area uh, how you play bunch passes, um, you know, how we're going to, you know, block, you know, some of their third down looks when they're on defense and they're giving you all these, you know, mugged up looks and all that type of stuff. So everybody's got a specific challenge and then we bring those things together and sort of try to figure out what works best in all those situations. Nice. Well, we can't wait to see what you guys have come up with. Uh, we hope the recruiting trail was fruitful for you. That big ass offense alignment Woo. from Texas that you uh, that was posted on the internet. You took a picture with. He's a guard. I think we looked up. He's like six six or something like that. Yep. He's moving a tackle. Right. Uh, never mind. <laughs> you're, you're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to talk about it. How has the recruiting trail been though? We got some good guys in the pipeline or what? been good yeah I, I enjoy recruiting you know it's fun to go out and meet people and you know i just took graduation pictures with a bunch of guys and the first thing that comes to mind these guys are graduating it's like yesterday i was in their home trying to get them to you know come to alabama and i always remember those home visits because there's some you know great experiences in meeting family and creating relationships so uh it's a lot of fun i enjoy it and you know like i've said before 
I, I only do a good job of coaching good players, so that's that's kind of goes with the territory. That was a great line. Yeah, I learned quickly that I'm not that great of a coach of bad players, but you give me oh. good players, I'm a, I'm a great coach. That's great self-awareness. And on the flip side, there's a whole new added element. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, speaking of uh, recruiting, Coach, obviously everyone right now talking about the transfer portal with over like 1,200 guys in there or whatever. Um, how much of your recruiting do you have to kind of pay attention and look into what's going on in the transfer portal and kind of actively going – after guys in there like is that a big part of recruiting are you mostly just you know getting the kids out of high school because of how much success you've had and if a kid wants to come to Alabama obviously you know it's it's not just like going to some you know middle of the road school like how how much uh are you actively kind of paying attention to what's going on in the portal when you're recruiting I think it's a little bit like you know most teams in the NFL like to build their team through the draft so we like to build our team through recruiting, bring young guys in, sort of develop the culture with them that you need long term to see them develop into being good players. But uh, I look at the portal almost like you'd look at free agency. Um, you know, if a guy's in the portal, he's looking to go someplace where he can play. Uh, and so therefore, we need to have a need for that guy at that position. And if we have that need and he fits the profile of what we're looking for at that position, then, um, you know, we'll recruit those kind of guys out of the portal. But um, we, we still like to try to build our team with, you know, good, solid, fundamental young players that we can develop in the program and can learn the system and be here for two or three years and develop. But uh, we've had some really good players out of the out of the portal that have really helped our team. Uh, in the past few years. Yeah, Burton, obviously, just immediately top of line, mm -hmm. has become a great threat for you guys down the field. And can't wait to see how you utilize him and that entire squad in the Rose Bowl just 17 days from today. I don't know if you've seen it, but you guys go in a college football playoff, ever, there's lawsuits happening all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> there's lawsuits happening all over the place right now. Obviously, that's not in your world, but can't wait to see your team go do its thing in a college football playoff. We appreciate the hell out of your time, Coach. We appreciate you having me, and we're looking forward to the challenge. It'll be a, a great game, I'm sure, but I'm really happy for our players that they got this opportunity. They've worked hard for it, uh, overcame a lot of adversity, showed a lot of resiliency throughout the course of the season, so I'm glad they're getting rewarded for it. Hell yeah. Hey, you too. A lot of coaching this year. Yep. A lot of coach your ass off this year, Coach. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Saban. Thank you, Coach. Hey, coach. A lot of coaching this year out of that, man. Oh, yeah. You know, normally that's not the, the case. That is That was the big storyline. Like, Reese would bring up, let's say it was like week six or seven college game day meetings. Yeah. Reese is like, hey, this Alabama team different than most years. Like, got yeah. ruled out really quickly, and then now it's just like – that just getting better and better because there was a game, I think it was against Texas A&M. Jalen Miller maybe threw the ball six times, or maybe the week before Texas A&M threw the ball six times. They just ran. That's all they did. And then a few weeks later, he threw the ball like thirty-one times mm -hmm. or something like that. And then you go to the big primetime game um, against uh, oh, I forget. We were doing the, the Washington USC and then Alabama LSU. 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 Alabama yeah. LSU. He had four touchdowns on the ground yeah. from mm -hmm. running thing. It's like what their offense and Tommy Reese have done throughout the entire year is only get better. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they got a freshman at safety who's like Hall of Famer, Dude, they're saying. Damn. And it's, they've only gotten better, you know? So I feel like he's probably very pumped in the fact that they're underdogs again. And he gets to utilize that, mm -hmm. us against the world mentality. There's, there's people in Florida, CFOs of a state, suing the NCAA because we're in the – imagine how much Saban can utilize that yeah. mm -hmm. as motivation for his team just like he's had all damn year. Yeah, I saw a stat they uh, of first team, second team All-Americans. They had five. I think the closest after that was three, which I think was actually Iowa. Yeah. Go Hawks, baby. Go hey. Hawks. Uh, AJ, it's that's something that Saban's going to pull from for sure. Oh, this is – it's set up perfectly for him. Usually Alabama's sitting up top and everyone's saying, hey, they're – they're the greatest, whatever, and he has to sit there and de-recruit his players every single week and you know talk about rat poison and everyone pumping them up. This year was the complete opposite. We didn't have that much, very much at all. Like now we will. I think that they're in the playoff, but it's already it's set up beautifully for him. Where I feel like not only his team, but I feel like Saban feels like he's having more fun than years past because you don't have those crazy expectations. I guess their standard is still there, 
but it's almost been like, oh, here we go. Like we're the we're the little guys that nobody gives a chance to, and it's crazy to think that that's Alabama right now. Bama had the capability of utilizing that, and then if you think about the other side, Michigan, it's like us versus the world. Bingo. They literally yep. tried to tear us down for something that we didn't know was happening. Now we reap the benefit of it, right. which doesn't get talked about, which they did, but they didn't know. Seemingly, from all of the research that we have heard, Harbaugh nor anybody else, maybe that one coach that got yeah, the yeah, linebacker. Yeah. let go or whatever, maybe, yeah. but it seems like not a lot of people had any idea that Connor Challenge. was doing what he was doing, so they got thrown into a mess that they didn't necessarily know that they were even doing, so that's an easy rally around, let alone the Harbaugh stuff, what everybody's saying, it's like we're in for a good one. Yeah. You know, that Rose Bowl is going to be a good one. I think we're going to be live from there. Ooh. I believe we will have a field pass for that particular game. I think we'll be on the sideline. Yes. Pretty excited <laughs> about that. I heard we might be in for a treat on the internet uh, as far as the flyover for that game. Um, Ooh. Something to watch. UFO? No. What is it? No. Apparently there was there was a a plane that was grounded that is no longer grounded anymore. And, you know, people a lot of, a lot of people call it the stealth, oh, the stealth yeah. bomber. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a stealth bomber. We might. For, was it based down in San Diego or something? Th- that's what the internet is telling me? Yeah. You know, because down in San Diego, a lot of military. Yeah. ton. Coronado. A mm-hmm. lot of military down there. Oh, yeah. And uh, California News Watch, local B-2 stealth bomber confirmed to fly at 2024 Rose. Let's go. Oh, my God. According gosh. to the Pasadena Star News, the Tournament of Roses confirmed the B-2 will fly over on January 1st, 2024. In 2023, the aircraft was grounded due to safety reasons. What? Because our minds baby. would be blown? There Welcome back, baby. Is that what it was? Safety concerns over the citizens cool. looking up and seeing a UFO and saying, no, that ain't a UFO. Good find. That's not unidentified at all. No. That thing's identified. That's America. That's right. That's R- phenomenal news. Rock, flag, and eagle. Oh, my oh. God. I wonder if they pipe in fake no, uh, noise like a Tesla does. <laughs> no, Maybe. it's not the cold stadium. They wouldn't do that. I'm talking about for the, for the bomber. bomber. Yeah, I know. Because it's stealth, you Yeah, say. yeah, yeah. No. So I wonder if they have somebody underneath. <laughs> is it noise stealth or is it, or is it just radar stealth? <laughs> <laughs> Both. I have no idea. I have no idea. That is I don't so think cool. that would work. Could you imagine it made no noise? Because that's what they say about the... Um, the alien stuff. Yeah, there's no propulsion. So, mm-hmm. like, there's no... It could go any way. No be- heat signature, nothing. Yeah. What if, is that what the stealth is? I think that one flies a certain direction because I saw the. Oh, yeah, the V. In one of these bowl games, though, they're going to try to present you with a you know, alien spaceship flyover and they're going to claim, like, oh, no, awesome. we've had this for years. It's just, you know, slowly trickle it out there. Yeah. I would, you know, who knows who's helping what in this entire thing as well, you know? Did we have that oh, on nice. in the agenda all the time to have a plane that looks exactly like a UFO? Since the engines of B2 exhaust at top and before the trailing edge of the wind, from a ground perspective, it is yep. indeed quiet. Further, the Spirit's engine intakes are above and behind the wing leading edge, which allows little noise Boom. on the ground as well. So, yeah. I do wonder if they're going to have to go. <laughs> Probably. Yep. You know, just let us couple, know the planes. A couple people, yeah. Hopefully they just don't tell us. And all of a sudden you just see this massive Shadow. thing. Yeah, just right directly over the stadium. We've got some news coming out of Houston. C.J. Stroud still in the concussion Ooh. protocol. Will uh, not be practicing today. Feels like C.J. Stroud is out this weekend, which means a return of Dougie Davis Mills. Yeah. Right. Tone was saying during the break there, he doesn't mind that at all. He's one of the biggest Dougie Davis Mills fans on earth. I am a Dougie Davis Mills fan, but as a as a gambler, I like to look for the buy low, sell high situations. And Tennessee just coming off a win against the Miami Dolphins. You know, there's going to be a couple points going in their direction just by public perception. And then the Texans coming off a horrendous loss to the Jets and playing with their backup quarterback. There's going to be a couple points deducted from their situation. So Ooh. that is right in the sweet spot for me. Okay. So he loves the Texans. Let's go to another team in the AFC. The New York Jets quarterback was back throwing ball on a practice field yesterday. Oh, no baby. Did you see your friend Aaron bopping around here Woo-hoo. on this fresh Achilles? Hey! Whoa. Ooh. Wow. Jeez. Pivot, turn, spin yeah. on that left foot. Remember, that's the Achilles. That's Kicked insane. the ground there a little bit. We are, I don't know how many days removed from a full Achilles surgery. Now, there's people on the internet saying he didn't tear his Achilles. No. <laughs> I don't know what he was hanging out with Neil Elitrosh for for so long then. You know, if he didn't do that, he's just opting out of a season. That's quite a way to frame an entire situation as an actual journalist saying that. Um, But, like, this is – so, if he could do that, 
we assume he can hmm. move yeah. around. Move you know, he says he's got to be able to protect himself, right? Does he show enough there to protect himself? We have a brand new video from four minutes ago of Aaron in practice. Uh, just kind of pat and go here. Pat and go situation in warm-ups. Does look like he's getting reps, though, with the team as opposed to just the flight school stuff that he's been doing after practice. Is this dude playing this weekend? What's going on here, AJ? Okay. What, 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 what's going on what here? What are they saying? What's coming? Up? What's Salah saying? What's Aaron saying? Has any, have we had any update on his status? Well, you asked him. He didn't say anything. He wouldn't give us an answer. He said, I'm immunized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he just moved and he along. Continues to, he continues to kind of say, like, oh, I've still got a lot, of, a lot of boxes to check, a lot of things to, to – Figure out before that's even a possibility. Well, and then I think he said December 24th on our program. Yes. And then a report came out later saying December 24th. <laughs> and he said, don't listen to these reports. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, report. Aaron, he, he he stopped using crutches because he forgot his crutches and it was a sign. So if he shows up to the stadium on Sunday oh, and boy. you know his game jersey is just hanging there, it's a sign and he's going to have to start. Tone, I think you're – taking a little bit of too much liberty with this whole universe thing. <laughs> because the jersey would have to be placed there by an equipment room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The equipment room would have to be given the heads up to put it there. So it wouldn't be the universe. It would have been a mistake. It would be a lot of humans actually making that right. decision. <laughs> but the humans making that decision would be in the know. Absolutely. Is this dude thinking about mm-hmm. playing football again this season no matter what? Like, he's not taking reps away, obviously, from Zach Wilson, who's a... Sweet, sweet boy. Sweet, sweet boy. Sweet boy. A, sweet, boy. a sweet boy. Good looking boy. And Robert Sala goes from fresh face to bearded face all the time. I assume a lot of the boys here who are stretching or watching over there, uh-huh. old eight throw the rock, and now he's kicking a ball. I just see him kicking a ball yeah. there. Standing on one foot trying to kick that thing. Uh, Brand new Achilles. Uh, this dude's healthy, huh? Over. Yeah, even him being out here, right? After yesterday, those clips that just ran. Like, isn't that a big deal? Oh, 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 Is he getting up on that toe? Is he up on the toe? We'd like to see a little dorsal flexion of that. Yep. Oh. Is he going on sand yet? He's turning on a heel pretty heavy. Yeah. He is. Pivoting on that heel. Fire does he normally on pivot on the ball of his foot or on the on his left foot? Does he normally pivot off the ball? Or he, heel? It's, it's heel right now, obviously. I mean, it's his Achilles, so he should be off his heel. So... He should be off his heel if it's the Achilles. Yeah, because- I don't know. I'm saying, is that how he normally throws? Does he normally pivot like that? I remember AJ I'm talked to Doc. Legit asking a question. Three hours. Uh, he he does have a fallback kind of throwing little yep. motion. Mm-hmm. Like he does have like torque. Little- he torques it different than most people. Yeah, how he just shoop. yeah, it's like a fadeaway too, like mm-hmm. the way he he does it, and then his feet will move while he's doing it. I think a couple years ago. He told us something about his throwing motion and his uh, fundamentals and technique with his lower body without telling us, though. He said something. I saw something in practice for 2013 or yep. something. You remember when he said oh, yeah, that? Yeah. And then we're like, what was he? I'll tell you later. I'll tell you yeah. later. Yeah, but what was it, though? We'll tell you later. And then you hear him give answers about people when they're throwing better versus when they're not throwing as good. And it all comes down to, like, his base. Their feet and their footwork and their base. That's what he talks about. If I ever ask him about other quarterbacks around college NFL guys, it all, he always mentions like their feet. He's like, well, you know, the guy's young. It's going to take him some time to kind of marry his feet to his upper body and everything that's going on. But once he gets his feet figured out, he should be good. So I think that's a huge thing with him, like footwork, where you know all of that stuff that people don't ever think about, really. Hey, congratulations, Raj. Yeah, dude, Thanks, Raj. You're doing some miraculous stuff. Keep going. The actual journalist, though, saying, I don't think he tore his Achilles. That's awesome. Absurd. Isn't it? I just, it just makes Who? no Who's sense. Who's saying that? Doctor, Plenty, plenty of people have. You? Greg Doyle here in uh, yeah. in Indianapolis is leading the charge, oh, I believe. Guy. Like, for real, though, saying, like, didn't, like, not, like, sarcastically. Like, saying, no, this no, guy no. really no. tears Achilles? No, I think he's, he said it a couple different times yeah. now. There's a lot of people in on it, then. That's the thing. you got to have a lot of people in on it. If, Robert if Sala, Nathaniel Hackett, the Jets training staff. Mm-hmm. Elitrosh. The Jets doctors, yep. let's not even get there yet. The the Jets equipment room would have to, like, everybody that is around the Jets organization on the day-to-day would have to know about it and say, we won't say the word. Danny boy. Then you go to the Achilles factory. Mm-hmm. You got Dr. Neil Alatrosh. Heather, I believe, is her name, Arnold Schwarzenegger's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Then you got J.K. Dobbins also yep. in on it because he's out there, uh-huh. if you do recall. And everything, those people would all have to be in on And then, obviously, Aaron Triple A, mm-hmm. Aubrey, the crew, what? that whole crew would have to be in on it and not Everybody. say it. So the amount of humans that would have to be like, yep, we won't say anything. Even though if we were to say this at all, we'd get, it'd be the biggest clout. Yeah. Also, what's moment. the reason? He, what would be the reason for faking it? What's the what's the positive for him? Oh, so that he could come back sooner than anybody. Yeah, for the story. Oh, okay. It's part, is, of, it's part of the script. Yeah, just to beat science one more time. 
That is wild. Okay, yeah. and it is a wild yeah. thing. And when I asked him about it, I don't think he- Look at that fake. Nice fake. <sighs> this is from yesterday. Jeez, he looks good, man. He looks quick. There's Hackett, too. Look, oh, yeah, that yeah. was it. That was what it was supposed to be. That's what Hackett's doing right there. That was what it was supposed to be right there. Yep. Look at the left leg, like, kick. Yeah, it's the left leg. You can tell yeah, he's feeling he like he- kicks it up. He kicks that left leg up right yeah. before he releases it. Right here. Boom. Oh, no. Jeez. I mean, he's spinning it pretty good there. Oh, good play action. Oh, yeah. those are mental reps, boys. There's the kick. This is what he this is oh, what he was sitting in that Achilles that's when he's factory feeling it. for 13 that's when he's hours it when he for right it. here. Oh, the kick up. Yeah. yeah. You see it? The left leg yeah. kick up. Yeah. He's in the pocket. It's like when he hits a good drive in, on the golf course, you know, he'll be bopping down the fairway pretty quick after that. It looks pretty good. Yeah, you bring that up a lot about like his golf moods. How he is so mm -hmm. competitive that he can't just have a round of golf where he's not playing good mm -hmm. and be a human. It's like if he's playing <laughs> bad, you will not hear from him or see him. <laughs> nope. Until he figures it out. And then when he figures it out, he's back. You know, it, he, I think he feels like he's disrespected golf. Mm -hmm. Playing bad, not supposed to be having fun. It's yeah. like, Aaron, you're not a professional golfer. No one cares. You were just in Hungary. Yeah. You were just in Hungary. I don't care. For three weeks. Everybody else you're competing against is at their country club practicing mm -hmm. every single day with a golf coach. I don't care. Supposed to be good. Yeah. And then he gets the top five, and he's like, yeah, see? I should have yeah. won. That's right. I should have yeah. won. Remember, if I didn't, three holes. Three yeah. holes. Mm -hmm. Remember? When I hit it, it's like, you're hilarious. This dude is a spectacle, bro. He is an absolute spectacle. Everything he does, obviously, people watch. But then the way he goes about operating is just absurd. Never met any human like it before. If he comes back... Oh. They're, they're basically eliminated. But not yet mathematically. Nah, for Raiders. Yeah. For Put that graphic up for the AFC uh, bubble. Is he still on our graphic? Because if we keep oh, yeah. it up there, oh, yeah. if the Jets are still on the bubble graphic, which... If they win this weekend. Boom. You just need a little, little bit of help, right? They're the exact same help. as the Raiders. Then them, the Raiders, and everybody else in the middle of the pack there. Don't look now. The Cincinnati Bengals, okay? After what I've seen them do to the Indianapolis Colts this last weekend, and the Colts... In the wild card. Obviously, we're a playoff team. Yep. Seven and six, 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 everybody. Six and eight, six and eight, five and eight, five and eight. Five. It's like the AFC is wild right now. Why not Zach Wilson come out for another half of football and just light it up? Bingo. Why not the Jets go on a little run and then the commies on 24th uh -oh. of December, <whistles> Christmas Eve? Aaron Rodgers makes his return after an Achilles tear I mean, you, earlier than anybody in the if history. If you look at it there, the Steelers and Colts, they're going to play each other, so one of them are going to lose. The Texans are dogs. The Broncos are dogs. The Bills uh, have the Cowboys, so that's a tough one. And the Bengals have the Vikings, and it's only a three-point spread. I mean, there, there's a lot that can happen in front of the Jets this weekend. If they, you know, they got to they gotta take on the Dolphins, so they got to take care of business, but... There's a lot that could happen. Yeah, it, 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 I'm almost at the point, and I was two weeks ago, I said, hey, Aaron, you did it. Don't play because this <laughs> offensive line is so good. I'm damn near at the point that he's going to play Sunday versus the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost there. I mean, why not? Yeah. From what we're seeing now, we haven't seen him run at all. We mm -hmm. haven't seen him evade a pocket. There's drills, obviously, like that we've seen in the past that quarterbacks can display, whether or not they can maneuver themselves in the pocket for their own protection. But this dude is one of one. Okay? Yes. And his Achilles might be immunized at this exact moment. Yep. From the videos we're seeing, there is a chance. Now let's stay in New York and stay in the place that we actually got a chance to hang out. Travis Kelsey missed Taylor Swift's 34th birthday party. Oh my God. Trouble Entertainment tonight was all over it. Obviously, they dove deep into yep. why he was not there. A source told Entertainment Tonight that he remains committed to playing his best and doing his best on and off the field. The team practices are critical mandatory to attend in something he takes very seriously. So it's no surprise he stayed in Kansas City ahead of this weekend's game. Wow. <laughs> wow. Not no, good. Noticeably, what does it say there? He was noticeably absent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey, noticeably absent. You know, he's a big man, yep. much larger yeah. than everybody else Boy. that is at these parties normally. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very recognizable, not only because he dates – uh, Taylor Swift at the moment, uh, but because he's like potentially greatest tight end of all time mm -hmm. to ever play football, multiple time Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. And I love that Entertainment Tonight felt obligated to put this out yes. because there is a whole new batch of people that are potentially following along with Travis Kelsey who have no idea that the NFL is a pretty big deal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty big deal, especially in the time of year that we're in right now. So, uh, Entertainment Tonight's doing the Lord's work. We really appreciate that reporting. Thank you. That's journalism. Yes. Isn't it, AJ? That is journalism Jeez. right there. 
I mean, if you were a if you were a fifth grade football player and you tried to miss practice for your girlfriend's birthday, no matter who it was, your coach would kick you off the team. Is this optics? Let alone though? NFL. True. Is this say, let's let's say they're winning. Let's say they're whatever. They have two losses on the year. He takes a private jet out after practice, stays the night, takes a private jet back in the morning just in time for practice. Yeah. Probably yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah, well, he did fly down 13 hours to South America yep. Yep. to watch a concert of hers and show his support and respect during a bye week. That's right. And people were up in arms about it. Yeah, they were. It's like, bye week, he's allowed to do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. This guy could do whatever the hell care. he wants. And how about him flying down there alone? Think about that on that plane. Buddy. <laughs> I've been in that moment a couple times, not for like 13 hours, 10 hours. Long flight. That's a lot of you time in there. Yeah. And then he gets off and he's like, hey, I'm here to show my support to you because you showed your support to me. I think this is, hey. Oh, yeah. I think it's a fast track. I agree. I think we're on a fast track right now. I agree. Can, Can you imagine? I mean, you say all the time, like, you know, during the season, guys get like sniffles or whatever. And it's like, hey. Stay home. Like, we don't need you coming in here and getting 10 people sick. Can you imagine him calling in and being like, <coughs> I don't feel good, I can't come in, and then going to something like this and getting photographed? Yeah. Like, that's what they expected him to do almost. No, they didn't expect They were just in fo- – I guess some people did expect yeah. him to do that. Yeah. I think some people had no idea how this whole thing works and how much yeah. money – They think he'd show up on game day, right? They think, hey, oh, he plays on Sunday. Why can't he come to a party on Wednesday or whatever? Well, he's the only one that wasn't there, <laughs> okay? What's going so, on? Well, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't care that much about her, huh? <laughs> well, that, that's the thing about Taylor. It's like, hey, the story here is Travis isn't there. For me, the story is Taylor Swift chooses not to have her birthday in Kansas Bingo. City, so Travis Kelsey can't right. go. No, no, her friend set about? it up. She wasn't yeah. her. Uh, uh, she she knew about it. Okay, she was definitely aware. Her friends were trying it? to do something nice. Uh, you know where it was? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was in New York City. At maybe a place we've been recently. Oh, nice. I've been on the roof of that place. I don't know if they let Taylor and uh, her crew up there Ooh, on yeah. the rooftop of that <laughs> place. I don't. I don't know if they have been. Who threw but, it, Selena? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, Brittany. Did it? I have no Spears? idea. My wife told yeah. me that maybe the uh, there was a Top Gun star and his wife potentially. Bingo! They were oh. there. Uh, there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Hey, that dude's electric. Yeah, he's. Beast. He the started. Best. How about he, how about when he started moving his feet whenever oh, yeah. he was. I mean, when, that man oh, yeah. when the dance floor started, whenever everybody started heading to the dance Dude, floor, no. and Miles was just kind of oh, hanging Miles. out for a little bit. You know, he's just talking, yep. having a good time, had a drink. How we doing? And then as the night goes on, people start dancing. And then there's just uh, one song comes on. And it's a quick reminder. Hey, I am an insanely talented yeah. human being. Yeah, I was in Footloose. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's not yeah. forget. Bro, his feet started moving uh-huh. mm-hmm. at a rate that I I was. You know, pretty doped up at that, at that exact moment. Just going on the roof. Mm-hmm. Had uh, maybe a few, few little elbows in my system. Bye. And, Bye. Uh, Jack and died. I was having a good Bye. time. Yeah. It was an absolute blast. And once this guy's feet started going, oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 shit. I haven't seen that since, like, college days people doing that. Yeah. He, he's... He's yeah. a talent. He's a, he he a, a talent. talent. Was there a drum set I was there? trying to tell him that. I saw him. I'm like, man, you got your whole hip action, shoulder, all your moves, whatever. Like, I got to get away from this because you're unbelievable. Bro, he what looked like do. it looked like it was in the movie. You know, they, they have that that, yeah. that thirst trap shot of him in Top Gun when he's doing his yep. dance thing. Mm-hmm. They should have let his ass on a dance floor. Yeah. Zoomed out yeah. and let him do his entire thing. What a stud. Absolute <laughs> stud. That's been a cool thing that's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Us getting to know Miles a little bit. Yeah, yeah. full circle. Let full the boy circle. dance. Yeah, look at you guys. Mature. Well, he tried to throw me under the bu- the world's bus pretty much. Yep. He's what, he, that's not how he, that's not what he intended to do. No. But in my eyes, that is exactly what happened. And we got to shake Hans. Yeah, we were bummed mm-hmm. out about it. We were bummed out Super about it. Super bummed out. We shook Hans. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, this is like one of the coolest dudes of all time. Great guy. He legitimately uh, is one of the coolest guys of all time. He's in like all of his dudes from home at least when we were in tahoe with them like just normal guys like completely happens to be an unbelievable dancer one of the best actors in the world right now and then also just normal dude get boozed up with you hang out and goes to phillies games bingo and, and uh gets nervous that they're showing him a bit too much because uh if they show me a bunch and then we lose this whole city's gonna hate me yeah. and i would like that not so that's like self-awareness you know that doesn't normally come from people in that particular position but I would assume he's invited to a lot of different events mm-hmm. because once those feet start tapping, oh baby, whoo, shows here, yeah. whole place gets lit, doesn't it, AJ? I mean, there was a different vibe once his little feet started. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. shit, this guy's it gone. Clears out quick. Everyone kind of, no matter who's in the room, people start to. It might not stop, but they might. Ta- they'll start to take notice. Like, who the hell? What is going on over there? What's wrong with that guy? He's just. 
He just bopping around. He's just doing rounds, too. He's not even really dancing. He's just kind of moving around talking to people. And I think I watched the exact moment he decided, uh, I'm going to take over this place. Like, <laughs> yep. he, he had a drink. I saw it, too. Yeah. I was Because I think we were in the same same area mm-hmm. there. We were trying to coax Shane Gillis into getting the microphone. Yep. Of course. Go, do an hour. <laughs> Come on. Do an hour. <laughs> Come on. Please. You wore a t-shirt like an asshole. At least least you could do. And Shane is hilarious, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're just having a drink. And then we just, Miles in it. And then he just puts his drink down. Yep. And he's like, all right, here we go. Let me flip the switch on this son of a bitch. And then it's just, boom. It's like, damn. Okay. He was on what? What Where do you guys know him from? I know him from Top Gun. I know him from Whiplash. 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 That's one of them. Footloose. Uh Uh-huh. That awkward moment. Boom. Efron. These are movies? Yes. Uh Okay. Always been movie guy? Didn't come from like the Disney world? No, I'm pretty sure he's always been a movie guy. Project X. When did he start dancing? When did he start dancing? You saw him on The Offer, didn't you, Pat? That was after Mm -hmm. Top Gun. I I, I watched Top Gun. I was like, I love this guy. And then The Offer happens, and I'm like, great story. If you have not seen Whiplash, that is... Unbelievable. Yeah, fantastic movie. Okay. Project X, he plays Miles Teller in the movie. It is pretty sweet. I think I've seen Project X. Yeah, mm-hmm. about the, the house party. Yeah. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. He's oh. in he's the he's the guy that hits the uh, uh You've seen War Dogs. Little thing of War Dogs. War Dogs. Oh yeah. yeah. What was it? Three hundred, four hundred million they were under Jonah Hill. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The next bid? Yep. Three hundred. They made it though. Yes, they did. Triangle of Death? Yep. There's some real dogs out there. Golden grenade. Hey, my Ty, I assume you did the same thing at Taylor's party because Travis couldn't beat him. Yep. I assume Travis would. Oh, yeah. Also. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. the moves. I assume Travis got the same thing. That's why he was noticeably absent. Right. Because normally, Miles goes, and then Travis goes, and then Miles goes, yep. mm-hmm. and then Travis goes, and then Taylor yep. <laughs> shuts it down, mm-hmm. and then she crushes it. Like, oh, what's, there's a, what's going on here? There's a noticeably absent, taller human being not here. Mm-hmm. E.T.'s like, we'll get to the bottom of it. Turns out he's a professional football player. Oh. Okay. They're right in the middle of their season. Right yeah. Oh, practice. Lost a couple games here. Things aren't looking up. Yeah. Got Perfect. one of the greatest plays of all time. Wiped off his resume. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Swifties. Learn ball, though. Shout out. This is how it goes. This is how it goes. Speaking of how it goes, nobody's going as good as Dak Prescott is. There's a bunch of stats coming out that he's about to be the first quarterback in the Super Bowl era to lead the NFL in passing TDs this season after leading the NFL in interceptions. You know, he had 15 interceptions last year. James Palmer's reporting that. We appreciate him. Super handsome, obviously. Hair always perfect. Last year with Kellen Moore, it was an interesting dynamic. You know, so much so that Mike McCarthy had to move on. Mike McCarthy given the play calling ranks once again for the first time in... Probably like six years. A lot of people thought that this was like a last chance, last effort for big Mike McCarthy. This year, completely different story for Dak, especially after 49ers game. He has absolutely slaughtered it. More confident. Every- is that big Mike? Is that the big Mike effect, you think, with Dak every single day? What are, what are your thoughts on the Mike McCarthy effect on Dak? Yeah, I think, I, I bet when Big Mike took over play calling duties as well, I think he probably got reinvigorated. He got re-energized into what he was doing. He probably knew how much he really, he probably missed it, honestly, being that, like, pivotal in the game and having so much control over it and trying to figure everything out. And then Dak, yeah, I mean, I think Dak and he must have a great relationship and how they communicate, how they, they kind of handle, especially like in-game adjustments as well as during the week. But is Dak going to be up for a comeback player of the year as well if he goes from 15 picks to now? I don't think touchdowns? that's how it works, but well, there's no. a lot of conversations. Sure you guys have thrown a lot of different criteria out for comeback players. Well, we haven't, but others have. Joining us now is a play caller in the NFL, a friend of the program, a man who has a massive divisional rival game that coming up this weekend. Head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Artie Smith. Hey, Artie. What's going on, Pat? Hey, when we're talking play calling, we see big that mustache. Wow. Whoa. Pop home see today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like and uh, Tom thick. Selleck. Yeah. Yeah. Let that thing continue to just grow. Maybe Ray over a month. Nah, I gotta I gotta trim it up. <clears throat> I don't know, but yeah. And I, I I get the the reason you're cheering for that, but I gotta keep it I gotta keep it clean, I guess. Think about it. You don't have to do this when you're calling plays. Yeah, nope. exactly. If you just grow your That's mu- true. That's a great point. <laughs> That's a great point. 
I didn't think about that. So <laughs> <laughs> something, boom, something. Think, let's, boom. Talk, let's talk about what a great idea. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Let's talk about calling plays. And obviously, this past weekend yeah. against the Bucks, quite a roller coaster. You're down, you're up, then game winning drive, you're down again, you're all over the place. Game of runs. Whenever you're calling plays, do you know when you're like in the zone, when you're seeing it well? What is it like whenever you're in there play to play? Are you thinking three plays ahead? How does it work as somebody that has to do it yeah. every single uh, week? Everybody, you know, even before I call plays, everybody that I've been around, they, everybody has their own style. You know, you do find that if you commentate on the play, you're going to be behind. And so a lot of it is trying to stay a, a play ahead. And uh, that's and you got to know yourself and how your mind works. Because the one thing is, if you start commentating on the game that happened, you're going to be late with the next call. And so the way you set things up and depending on how your staff is, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. But and then the other side, when you're talking about momentum, you can certainly, when you're in sync, it's like you're you're in a flow, uh, it's, and it's really a credit to the players. But that that's what you want, and you, you feel it. That momentum and energy is real, and uh, you know sometimes it's just one play here. You, you just get that drive started, and, uh, and and then it rolls. But there's a lot that goes into it. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, you're saying if you if you commentate on the the previous play, it'll kind of put you behind. What exactly do you mean by that? Right. I mean, you know, you, you may call something and something happens, right? A guy gets beat or, you know, they give you a, a blitz look they, that you weren't anticipating. And, you know, if you say, hey, what happened there? And, you know, they spot the ball, the clock goes. And so if you're sitting there commentating too long on the previous play, you're late on the next call. And so you've really, you've really got to, in your mind, be disciplined enough that, hey, you'll get in between the series. And as you know, you have a spotter, you got to have a, you have a play, like assuming you're staying on track. But if say all of a sudden something happens, uh, you know, guy gets beat, Unfortunately, you get sacked or whatever. Uh, a penalty happens. You know what's your next call? Like you're on track, off track, uh, and everybody's got different styles. But that you're going to be late though if if you sit there and you you watch too long at the end and. That's what I mean by commentating. Yeah, and we see that sometimes. Refs, sometimes calls make uh, call, play callers a little bit late, especially if they're head coach. Are you watching Jumbotron? Are you watching back-end defense? Are you watching ball? What are you watching to see what you need to do next? Well, really, it's operation and, and you know, the situations. That's why you talk about – I always compare it. If you ever listen in, I guess, on in like an Indy 500 or, or NASCAR race, and you hear, you know, the spotters and the, and the logistics go go around about, hey, this is what we need to do when we got to make a pit stop. So you have to have spotters, and and you can't have too much chatter as you're going in. It if you're changing personnel, you know, you're trying to stay on track. So you need that spotter. You're seeing what's happening. You want to make sure you get out of the huddle, and it's clean operation. And you're watching, but at the same time, you've got to have in your mind, here's my next call. And then you have, depending how you set it up, or you got plays you have, or if we're off track, and then so there's. That's it. Just it's just going to happen so fast. So you know that's as you know, Pat. When you're out there, AJ, the game's quick. As soon as that plays over, they blow the whistle. They snap that. I mean, they they spot that ball, and the play clock starts. You know, it's a moving clock. And so I've been around guys, you know, and they get you can't get too emotional. And so that that's what it is. You want to be operationally sound and stay ahead. Yeah, not too emotional, but at least a little emotional because some of these memes of you on the sideline, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially with your mustache and the the, the whole. Ah, those ones, we love them. So we appreciate yeah. the emotion. Speaking of emotion, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, we have a segment on the show. It's called In the Trenches, and former Super Bowl champion A.Q. Shipley just kind of highlights great offensive line play mm -hmm. schemes. And he loves what you guys do in the run game. But every single morning, he comes in here all rocked up about Chris Lindstrom. And allegedly, <laughs> he says that he's the best guy he's ever seen. He says there's eight to ten pancakes this dude is getting a game and that's kind of unheard of he's a boston college guy so you kind of expect that but yeah. in your opinion is he the best guard in the nfl and how much of a difference does it make when you got him blocking for these schemes that you're draw drawing up well i mean it's that's uh obviously you can tell by a smile on my face uh you know i've been telling people anybody that listened to me that and you know, there's a lot of great players so this isn't just the cope the coach being on the soapbox about you know his own guys but I don't know anybody that plays as consistently to the level that Chris does, and I, that's cool to hear because you know, you know, we're we don't have a lot of flashy guys, and we don't have a lot of self promoters. Um, but I mean, Chris, I, I there's I've coached a lot of great players, uh, but I I don't know anybody that's played at that level consistently that Chris does. It is it is impressive, and I'm glad somebody's finally noticing because to me, he should be a an all pro guard. Um, but Chris is never going to see that line line. That's what you love. And uh, 
it fires me up to hear that people are noticing because uh, I love the guy. I mean, it's just hey, there's all those guys. I mean, he went out of series. I mean, we we had four guys in there uh, playing. You know, two guys really the first meaningful snaps. Another BC guy, Tyler Vrabel. We had Ryan Newzel, um, who's our human keg. Pat is, is that he's the, the be- He's got the best body of a lineman in the NFL. He's got one of those you know bellies uh, like a keg gut. You know, where it's like an it's it's a six pack, but I mean that thing's like it's like a pony keg in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, news you know, he was rolling last week. It was fun, and it's unfortunate. You know, we came up short, but uh, those guys are awesome. Hey, when a pony cat gets rolling, mm-hmm. life gets good. Yeah. Is that Vrabel, Vrabel that we're we're hearing? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. But he takes that more. He's more quiet and stoic. He's more like his his mother Jen than Mike. But yeah, that's that's Vrabel's son. What's Mike like if you had to just describe him in one <laughs> word? Oh, I don't think you can in one word, but. Uh, but Tyler's more stoic, I guess, would be the best way. I love Mike Vrabel. Yeah. I forget oh, what he he's said. the best. And the other day in his press conference, he said something about dumb shit or that shit. I forget what it was. Just like super <laughs> relaxed and holding his thing. And I am I just can't get enough of Mike Vrabel. He's an Ohio fuck. Jeez. Oh, See you Monday. Golly. Oh, oh my Dude, I, God. Yeah. Hey, Pat, I got a question. Why do you, got, why do you have sleeves on today? I, I feel mean, like it's like a formal attire. I would have I would have dressed up more. Classic. You look good. Yeah, listen. I appreciate it. So do you, but I, I just it disarmed me. I was like, did I not get the memo? You know, black tie on the McAfee show today. Coach, what a lot of things just happened. Okay. We yeah. Just, seems we, like it. We just went off ESPN at 153. We are still live on ESPN Plus <laughs> and on YouTube. There's only one word that I'm not allowed to say that I agreed to not say on ESPN. And it, the word is, is fuck, coach. <laughs> and literally... Four seconds before we went off the air. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I said it. So the way we ended this week on ESPN is muted. Yeah. <laughs> what a joke. This is the worst show. We're so thankful you, you joined. Get fined? Huh? You get fined? Huh? You get fined? We haven't seen a fine yet. We got a guy named Dick Good, uh, Richard Good. He has a team of uh, people that are censoring things. So I think they've caught every single one. Sent us right in the weekend with it. Yeah, but I don't know if we're getting fined. I, I, I haven't followed up enough to find that out. But to your point about the shirt, a lot of comments this week. Good I comment. wore a long sleeve the last couple of days. Oh, damn. It's crazy. A lot of my tank tops have gone uh, worn in the pits, you know, because I wore them from Amazon. Oh, so I, and also it's getting cold. Mm-hmm. And it's is. like, is now the time to potentially wear – other stuff. Like, I wonder, do you think Steve Jobs ever said, I want to wear a fucking t-shirt today instead of the turtleneck? You know what I mean? Every single day? I don't know. I, you know, I'm not a big turtleneck guy. Probably wouldn't look good on me. I don't see you and AJ being turtleneck guys or really by anybody associated with the McAfee show, but but I, I get what you're saying, though. I mean, you could wear a, like a like a vest that gets cold and no sleeves, right? Yeah. Like a zip-up vest. Yeah, and I got hoodies that are obviously <laughs> sleeveless yeah. out there. I could do that. Um, it's interesting. It's a, it's a, to be honest, I don't envy my position right now, <laughs> having to make a decision about the tank top future in my life. The zip up vest too. Yep. It's like almost too formal. Like you know, that's like a special event occasion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The zip up vest was for a birthday party. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Have we learned anything about aliens? We got a B uh, two stealth bomber flying over the Rose Bowl mm-hmm. for the uh, flyover. Mm-hmm. Makes no sound. Looks like a UFO. Have you learned anything since the last time we've chatted? I have not. Uh, I, I, I let you guys down. I have not. Uh, Damn it. Been too busy trying to make sure we uh, get to Charlotte and, and get get the win. So I I, I apologize. <laughs> All right, let's put it on the agenda for the off season. Yeah, yep. 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 we will. We will. We'll have a big alien summit. Maybe we, maybe we, you know in India at the combine if we can do that. Ooh. Oh, boom! Good idea. Now we're talking about yeah. genius. And when you're at the combine, you're going to be celebrating because you're going to be NFC South champs. That's boom. right. Road to yeah. that is still possible. Good luck this weekend in Carolina, and that mustache is phenomenal, Coach. I appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. Head coach Atlanta Falcons, Artie Smith. Hey, coach. I appreciate the fact that he comes in here. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's the man. No matter what happens, love him. Yeah. You even kill guy. Yeah. I assume his guys love him. You know, we seen him drinking beers with the boys before, yeah. allegedly. Always the same. Right. Always the exact same. Yeah. I appreciate him stopping by. They could, they still have everything in front of them. Absolutely. Yeah. They can still oh, yeah. host the playoff game. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Could probably still sneak in at seven too. Yep. Could you fathom the Atlanta Falcons hosting a playoff game after the way this year went? Remember we were down in Georgia. Yes. Oh yeah. 
and the things that were being said from that crowd Ooh. to Artie Smith. A lot of signs. I mean, it was it right. was very yeah, you're loud. right. I for, almost forgot about that. Yeah, that, that's not that long ago, you know? Like, that's not that no, long at ago. at all. And now still have an opportunity because of the way the NFC South has kind of unfolded and all. It's like ludicrous dropping down from that sure. Come sphincter on. top of Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the middle of a playoff game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Place will be a lot house. That camera? Not the lot house. Well, well, yeah, not the no, yeah, well. Ladies and gentlemen, the interim head coach and GM have been announced for the Los Angeles Chargers. They've named Gri- uh, Giff. Giff. Giff Smith, interim head coach. Could be Jiff. Well, no, this is the whole. It's not. No, it's G like Greg. Yeah, but that looks like a Biff with a G. It does. Yeah. So I'm just going yeah. GIF. Yeah. But it could definitely be GIF because if you remember how the whole GIF, GIF, right. GIF mm-hmm. thing that started. Mm-hmm. So we're not 100% sure what his name is, but Coach Smith is the interim head sure. coach. And JoJo Wooden, who Schefter alluded to earlier, is the interim general manager. Still a lot of decisions that have to be made over the next three weeks, especially with injuries happening and who do you want to see for the future? And also, how do you want to handle getting an opportunity to run your own team? You have a three-week tryout audition process. There's going to be a lot of people that have eyes on how you do. Good luck to both of them, and good luck to the Chargers as they return to some relevancy, hopefully. Good luck, Chargers. Yeah, yeah maybe. Kellen probably we'll done then in, in there. Probably. Giff Smith? No, no. <laughs> K- Kellen Moore. Yeah, they're going to they're clean, clean house. Yeah. Whoever comes in. Where, where's Kellen going? He's going back to Maybe. Boise. I don't know. Actually, yeah. you never know. You never know. A new guy will interview him and see who he wants to keep. Jerry like made a Bill big Mike keep him. Kellen. Whenever he yeah, can. I guess you never know. Yeah, Spanos could just love him. Spanos. Probably not, though. Hard to imagine Spanos loving anything right now. We saw his quote from himself while stating that he quoted Bingo. it. Right. It's made, it look, made me look like a dipshit, and I fired my head coach and GM. What the fuck? I can see that being a conversation in L.A. today. Let's get to a break. <laughs> we have a uh, Italian-American Sports Hall of Famer joining us. That's right. Let's go. On the other side. Sean Stolato. <laughs> Sean Stolato. He's taking over the world, man, this guy. I am so thankful because I do have some questions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. I do have some questions. First one, how's your family? Obviously. Yep. Certainly going to say. <laughs> right. How's right. your family? Mm-hmm. He follows, I, I found him on the internet, you know? He follows, mm-hmm. like, yeah. every sports account. Doesn't follow me or anybody from the program. It's like, we're the most Italian show there. Hates our show. <laughs> the hell, Sean? <laughs> right? He, he hates our show. This guy hates Because when he was doing his media run earlier, I was like, how are these people able to get a hold of him so quickly? Oh, it must be social media. They DM, blah, 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 blah. It's like, couldn't get to him. Was he coming on next? Yeah, dude. I'll grab mine. Boom. There you go. Yeah, dude. You guys. Nick's got copper gloves on. <laughs> Still? Okay. No, no, okay, no, no, okay. No, He's never okay, been gifted no. a horn. He's got Capicola in his pocket, though. You got to remember, his dad, Nick's dad, told me he was not Italian. Mm-hmm. Just moments before I was about to give a wow, look how Italian this place is speech. And the reason why he said he's not Italian is because he wasn't born there. His mom was. Ah. Yeah. So he's so Italian that he doesn't think he's Italian because right. mm-hmm. he wasn't born Stolen in that. Italy. Stolato, you're coming into friendly grounds here. That's right. Maybe. Whoa. Tony Doc. Gonna learn today. Tony, he's going in the Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. Which I respect. Yeah. What are you talking about? Did he play coach in Bocce? Does he have a squad? So, we'll Sa- uh, Sal? Sal, was that the bocce player that was going in this year? Masakela? No, not, not, not Sal Masakela. We love Sal Yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Anytime I'm watching snowboarding, Sal Masakela's there. Better be. That's uh, Mario. Mario, Mario Massa. Mario, Mario. Mario Massa. Yeah. He's going in for bocce. He's 79 He's years old. Yep. What? Anywhere from... You had to wait till he was 79 to get into the Hall of Fame no, for bocce? He, I'm on. saying 65 to 90 years old. Like, the photo is oh. could be yep. any age, really. Wait his whole life. But congratulations to all of them going in today. And we'll have one of them. Lower left corner. Founder of SES Sports. Mm-hmm. Stellato Enhanced Sports Sports. Sport. That's right. From Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> Cannot wait for this. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Five. five.
What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Undercover. Oh. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for sure. My first undercover dog is Ivy Pace Jr. Only played nine games this year. He's six on the team in tackles. This week he had 14 tackles, Black. one PBU, Black. one TFL, Black. and the game winning interception. What was really more exciting to me, running full speed, 232 pounds, and hit a backflip like this. My second undercover, oh. David Njoku. This past week he had six catches for 91 yards. He's the first on the team with 59 catches and four touchdowns. Man burnt his whole face off. Check out his second touchdown on Sunday. <coughs> and the stiff arm. My third undercover, oh. Brandon Arbor. First kicker to have two 59 plus yard kicks in the same game. He's 30 for 30. He have the longest streak right now to start a career without missing. Every week, this film is for guys who don't get the recognition that the big names get. Hashtag undercover. Oh. Help me pick out my guys for next week. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for sure. Tonight is a night where everything's going to be remembered. Every play, every sweat, every fight. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told them all that I was soon, soon. No, it's a child back in the womb. Hey, let's have a national championship Monday, huh? My name's Pat McAfee. Mm -hmm. I've started this show two different occasions already. This will be the third. Wow. <laughs> It's 2023. We eat adversity for lunch. Ugh. There's just so many different forms of gummies coming in my mouth. Boss man, can you do a kickflip? 100 for it? 100 for it? Oh! Come on, bro. That was awesome. Hey, this little teddy bear is cool. This all around. Sweet. <laughs> all right, I feel pretty good for this ESPN party. Let's go have a blast in there. <laughs> Boom. Need you to do a red carpet. I've never done a red uh, carpet before. I got a poop, so. I don't know if now's the time. We're invited to the ESPN party, and now we are all sitting on a red carpet. We had no idea this was coming, obviously. We thought we were just getting some free drinks. <laughs> A lot of people on the internet say I look tight. What's what? that all about? I'm a massive fan of Posner. Mm -hmm. He was getting motivational speeches in between yeah. songs. He was playing yep. other people's songs. Good. He was telling people, stay done. We're going to make a moment. <laughs> Only on the count of three, we're going to go yep. crazy. Oh, oh I know. Say so. Say so. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, a couple of these. Oh, oh, Bring it up. Oh. Who's up? What do you want? <laughs> what you do? Gotta make it a fact, man, baby. It's gotta last until 9 o'clock. Happy birthday! Sack of shit. Oh, yeah. So fired up to be here! Yeah! Hell yeah, yeah. I got a so. neck tie and everything! <laughs> Holy what? shit! What Tim missed? Tebow's here. Oh, oh my God! God. Look at that cut. The most handsome shot in our show's history. Thank Nick you. Saban has been spotted at SoFi. Great work in the back, Fox team, boys crushed it. Now we got game day, then the mega cast. Let's go. Hey, let's have a night. Obviously the enemy of great is good. The enemy of a dynasty is winning one championship and letting it go. Fran, you're obviously going to Colorado, a place that's been looking for some sort of championship for 20 years. You're also one of the greatest speakers I've ever heard. What are you saying to your team? You can't get here and all of a sudden change. Yeah. You don't want to see a different mannerism of somebody, especially the coach. You see, everybody's talking about the players. Yeah. But you got a coach to coaches too. Did you smile yeah. there too? Yeah. I saw Were you smiling? smiling? Oh, yeah. I saw a smile. I do that every now and then. Big moments, Tebow perfection. We got some real magic here tonight, don't we? I love that toad that takes those mushrooms. And them. <laughs> With that being said, Stetson Bennett's 25 years old. He's so damn comfortable. Darnell Washington's the backup tight end. He's 6'7", 270. Brock Bowers, best player on the field. The defense full of dogs. Give it to Georgia Bulldogs. Go back to back. First time since this man and his Alabama squad. I love the Bulldogs tonight. Barking all over the place, coach. We went all the way to the roof to come back. We are so sorry. All right, let's roll. I gotta get to the sleep. And then I'm gonna hop over the sleep thing. Good, Grant. You are looking.
looking at SoFi Stadium, where we'll be crowning a national champion for our college football season tonight. And the dogs are on the board early. Wide open. Well, that's the shot that they wanted, baby. That's embedded with his second touchdown in the first half. Pick. Oh, no! Oh, no! Georgia's oh, first no. down. One-handed! Oh, touchdown! Oh. Rock Byers, oh. touchdown! It is currently 45-7. to seven. It is 52-7. Touchdown! Gee, this is just a good old back-home ass whooping. It's a blowout, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. hey -o. That. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Friday, December 15th, 2023, hour three of the program starts now. Football is happening all weekend. Football happened last night in a historic ass-beating fashion. That is not what we're going to be talking about right now, though. That's A.J. Hawk. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Anthony the Julio is here and joining us now. One of the newest members of the Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. A man who rose to national and international sensation levels on Monday night when he showed up on the sideline showing love to the hottest quarterback in the NFL, Tommy DeVito. His agent, founder of SES Sports, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Stolata. Yes, yeah, you look awesome. Thank you. Thank you, boys. I appreciate that warm welcome. Hey, listen, you're from Salem, Massachusetts. You played wide receiver, I believe, in high school and then even in college at Marist, where you have records for the amount of touchdowns as a wide receiver. We tried to do some research because we have a Massachusetts person here about you. As soon as we saw you and learned of your existence, they told us, this is who you've been your entire life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolute dog on the football field. Did you know you were going to be an agent? Or how did you get into this entire kind of profession that you are currently the face of? I don't know if you know that or not. You know, I'm, I'm very humbled for those words. Uh, I saw the movie Jerry Maguire back in 96. And I said, that's kind of cool. And honestly, Pat, if I could still be playing, I probably would be. Uh, so I said, what's the closest I can get to the game? And that's representing players. And I've got a lot of Jerry Maguire stories. Uh, just very excited for the moment right now. Uh, Tommy has taken the bull by the horns. Testament to where he's came from, where he is, eating humble pie. And he's got a boulder of cutlets on his shoulder. <laughs> so whenever you walk into Tommy Bolognese's house and you meet Mr. DeVito, who we believe from our internet sleuthing, owns a plumbing company. And the marketing picture is literally a picture of Mario and Luigi uh -huh. as, you know, their plumbers. When you walk in and meet the DeVito family, obviously you say, how's your family? But on May 1st, whenever you sign them to the Giants, did you know what was potentially possible? And what is your relationship like with the DeVito family? We saw you obviously kissing cheeks with Papa DeVito during the game. You know, you said it earlier, Pat. What you see is what you get. Uh, obviously, Tommy and I put a premium on the, the root of all of this is our Italian heritage. Um, and his mom and dad, Lexi and Tommy Sr., uh, they look at they're they're great. I've known them uh, since last uh, January, and they truly have embraced me as part of their family. I've done the same. They, we had a huge draft party that they came, and we had a great time. Look at draft day, 2018, slammed the door in our face. We had four dominoes, uh, and you know, obviously, Coach Gable, Joe. I mean, the organization, we weighed out the pros and cons, playing for your boyhood team, all of those passionate Giants and Jets, excuse me, Giants and New Jersey fans. And, uh, you know, look at he, Tommy is in an overnight sensation. Tommy was an Elite 11 guy. Tommy was 2018 Dark Horse for the Heisman. Tommy went up against Tua at the Oregon Open and was the MVP. So, look at, you know, from an athlete, we hit speed bumps. 
you know, and he had, whether it's politics, whether it's coaching, at timing, and he reinvented himself at Illinois, comprehended another playbook. And look at his pre-draft process. He had a really good week out at the East-West. I was shocked he didn't get drafted. But you know what? I love the underdog. I love the blue-collar guy because that's how I was raised. And it's just intoxicating to be around his family because we got one goal. It's to get better. And are you better than you were yesterday? And also, huh? Well, God will go to uh -huh. A little, yeah, you know what, Stu Gatz. Yeah. <laughs> You know, go ahead, AJ. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, how has this impacted you and your, you know, your recruitment of athletes? Obviously, I'm sure as an agent, you're always trying to get your next clients and all and build out your company. Has it also helped with everything else, all the the notoriety that Tommy and yourself are getting? You know, I actually three guys that came in uh, number two top 100. I got the answer to this last Friday. On, um, I have one uh, one out there. We'll see. And I did sign two guys that i'm super excited about one will be similar to tommy will be a, a dark horse but it's got the traits and instincts um just like tommy ability to process and make those tough throws uh so we'll see what happens there but i can't control that narrative you know there's bigger firms and what guys are hearing i'm just worrying about servicing my guys at SES sports taking care of tommy protecting him on and off the field uh the whole italian thing is is great but at the end of the day he's got to produce I've got to produce because it's an it's an evaluation process, you know, throughout the season uh, and the off season. So football never sleeps, right? Competition never sleeps. But we're embracing the challenges and just excited to be in the moment right now. So at Stellato Enhanced Sports Sports, you're the only agent, or is there others? Do you just I, I in my mind I picture like four Italians, you know, just out there hustling, running the phones, doing. The, is there an Italian potentially coming in the draft? Yeah, Obviously, you know what? He needs to be represented by the family here <laughs> and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, hopefully there is an Italian that uh, he's 50% uh, Sicilian, so similar to my wife, um, but he hopefully will join the SAS family. Uh, you know, I do have an infrastructure under me. My, my director of operations is Italian, uh, which he's uh, the football encyclopedia. And uh, I've got a couple other guys that are affiliated with the firm that have a vowel at the end of the name. But I am the lone agent. And, um, you know, obviously, I think that's what my guys like about me because there's no BS. There's no sugarcoating. They they know it's 24-7, 365. Listen, I come from an Italian uh, community, okay? We might be the most Italian sports show to ever exist. On that note, Anthony DeGiulio has a question for you, Mr. Sean Stellato. Yeah, Sean, since uh, since going viral the other day, like, have we cornered the market? Has has Matt Milano called? Has Sirianni called and said, hey, I'm dropping my agent. I need to be with you. Let's corner the market on Italian-Americans in the NFL. Have we gone there yet? Now, you know, my my phone's – my door's always open. I guess, uh, you know, I'm a proud Italian. I, you know, we try to stick together, but I guess – I, I'm sure those guys are represented greatly. Nah. Um, obviously, uh, right now, I'm focused is on on Tommy DeVito, and uh, he's the lone and my other clients. And uh, I'm embracing this Paisan, the passing Paisan. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how many hats you got? How many top hats? Uh, I would probably say maybe nine. Are you the cleanest dressed agent in the game? For sure, right? I mean, that's what my players tell me. My clients tell me that. Always, you know, dress, always dress like, like you will never be seen not incredibly fresh because I think I even saw you whenever the bon, uh, Boston Italian consulate gave you a certificate. You had this sweet oh, fit right. on oh, yeah. with this great hat. Always fresh, always. This is how Sean Stellato is. Yeah, you know what? My my grandmother, uh, she worked in filings in Boston, God rest her soul. She immigrated from Ponte Grande. And uh, she used to tell me stories of Milan and she used to, you know, dress men. And, um, you know, I'm the one, I'm the baby of three boys. And my mom, you know, I kind of, in, in essence, was a, the daughter my mother never had because she wanted me to look good. So we had the Miami Vice thing going as a kid, uh, Don Johnson, the white sport coats. And I, my wife thinks my first life, I was born in the 20s because I love the fedora. That's in honor of Sinatra, Rocky Balboa. Um, so... I really, you know, that, 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 we have brainstormed some ideas yep. for SES Sports over here. Mm -hmm. Just because we've been, you know, infatuated with the story as well. 
Here's one I think that you should potentially think about. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Sean, you're obviously a very sharp guy. Uh, you went viral. Kind of everything you do right now turns to gold. And we were just kind of spitballing a little bit. I don't know if you really need, you know, like taglines or anything like that because that doesn't really seem like your style. But just kind of bear with me here. Have you considered, you know, when you're kind of courting new clients, maybe going with something like, I will never forget about you? <laughs> You know, I like that, man. I mean, I, I we obviously love our taglines, and I, I've got nicknames for everybody, but I like that. I'll never forget about you, or I'll make you an offer you can't, can't refuse. refuse. Here we go. Hey, we appreciate yeah. you, Sean. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Congrats on the success. Congrats to the DeVito family and all your other clients. I'm excited to see what you do, because you're a young man in this entire I, game. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I've been blessed, very humble. And look, I'm only as good as my clients, and it's about getting the right guys on the bus. Uh, but I love what I do. I live my bliss every do day, and I got to be fortunate, Pat. I, I'm married. I got a beautiful wife inside and out, you know, and my my daughters. I got four daughters. So I got the balance. It's just not all football 24-7 in the house, which is important. Maybe I get my nails painted by my five-year-old, <laughs> or, or we do some uh, – funky stuff on the head but i appreciate it guys thanks for having me on and uh go giants hey no problem at all and whenever they paint your nails you'll have a hat that'll match that thing yep. you know what i mean you'll get that <laughs> figured out we appreciate you ladies and gentlemen sean Stallone. Yeah, i know it's early but uh bononote oh Don't okay play. hey bononote, bononote. <laughs> hell yeah you think he'd be able to beat the norman pepperonis and bocce <sighs> no I, I know he wouldn't so. beat. He was a fighting. great wide receiver. He was. He was a great wide receiver. I think he's an athlete. Mm -hmm. I think oh, that's yeah. why you're underselling. He's 45 years old. They got pictures all over the internet of him yeah. just absolutely strapped. Have you seen that, AJ? He's jocked. I have not seen. I saw the one where he was getting the award with the sweet vest and the white mock on. You haven't seen, seen, seen the quads on this guy, dude. He's huge. No. They got pictures all over the internet. This guy, damn near, he's jocked. Yeah, absolutely jocked. Parachute. He. What was the story about in the basement? Yeah, so it, he coached a high school team, St. John's Prep. Actually, Bill O'Brien's sa same high school as him. It's a private school in Massachusetts, a little closer to Salem. It's up in Danvers, and he was the wide receivers coach there while also training some of the players from St. John's and just other guys in the area in his basement uh, basically being like a personal trainer I guess and then from there a lot of the players that play at like that level in That's Massachusetts quiet. that go on to get like certain you know practice squad gigs he's he, you know he has Tommy DeVito he's got a lot of hungry dogs yeah. looking to play some ball as his clients as well him walking into those meetings I like at the combine here where all the business gets done the thought of him walking into one of these steakhouses, you know, taking the jacket yeah. off, putting it on a thing, uh -huh. going and sitting down, uh -huh. meeting with a general manager, you know, tipping Can't the wait. cap. <laughs> Sean Stilato. Yeah. Yep. Way to go, pal. Caleb Williams needs a Sean Stilato. Yeah. I'll be excited to hear how the draft process goes. Me too. You know? It's the biggest draft of my freaking life. I think we need to flood the streets this year at night. Uh, just, you know, get get our put our uh, ears to the ground. I think we always say we're going to do that. Yep. And then time comes never. and it just, we go. Nah. Bruce does. They Bruce. stay out so late. Yeah, this is NFL spring break. Yeah. Bruce goes and sits at the bar and, you know, tries to Listen, get some information. I think, I think the Giants are signing Saquon. Yeah. yeah. I think so. It's for what I'm I mean, best like the table last night for like three hours. He was, he was eating a little shrimp friends. cocktail, I think. Mm -hmm. He was he got a little yep. loose-lipped around a few different drinks. Cowboys he was cool. tight end coach. <laughs> Prime is popping. It's nice. It's where they all – it's <laughs> literally where all the business of the NFL gets done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. It is cool. Speaking of cool, we have a segment that we do every single week that for some reason – it's the only one we've stuck with. Yeah. Well, I, at this point, we could we can kind of say hockey is awesome. Has also right has become a seg. Yeah, and it feels like filth is going to stick. I think so. <laughs> is it? Well, let's see how many plays go this weekend. We got to change that. We got to figure out the uh, people love the, the filth. We I love the filth. I had yeah. a great time doing filth. Hash well, I just said like filthy, but it was cool. Yeah, but filthy is pms filth. the only way to describe some plays that happen out absolutely there. jack jones one-handed pick six filth that was filth. absolute filth absolute yeah. filth gotta have it yeah you're right you miss jack jones nfl and the f stands for filth is going to stick around absolutely yeah. do you do you miss him? do i miss jack jones yeah you know to quote one of the uh better coaches in the nfl possibly one of the best coaches in the nfl you know we're not looking for prisoners we're looking for volunteers so no i don't got a lot of volunteers <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers, underdogs coming to Indianapolis. That was a surprise to me. That was a surprise to me.
And when I said that, the Steelers fans in the office were like, what? Who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. We got Mitch Trubisky. I'm like, we got Gardner. What are we? We're using a backup quarterback as well. What are we? Mitch Trubisky was a starter for longer than Gardner Minshew was. Yeah. I mean, what are we even? Playoffs. Why, why is this even a, a thing? You guys score 20 points. We can't score any points. It's like, yeah, but you still have a winning record. And we are very much coming off a loss in which we looked our worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is not like a lot of good momentum going either way. That's because the Lod House, though. That's yeah. right. That's because of the Lod House. Different AJ, thinker. there's a lot of good lines this weekend. Let's go ahead and pick. <laughs> The entire yeah. slate. Let's start with the Minnesota Vikings and the Cincinnati Bengals. Three-point favorites at home against a team that has not done fantastically as of late. We all trust Kevin O'Connell. Mm -hmm. We all trust that the future is probably bright whenever they figure out their quarterback situation. Kirk Cousins was wheeling and dealing just like he was last year. Then he tears his Achilles. The Pastronaut story was fantastic, but they have been pretty bad offensively since then. <laughs> Defense, though, flying around. Fine. So good. Winning really low scoring games. Yeah, mm -hmm. really low. Like three nothing games. Oh, it's mm -hmm. possible. Do you think that Jake Browning, quarterback out of Washington, now with the Cincinnati Bengals, can do what he did last week against the Cincinnati Colts to this Minnesota Vikings team enough? Or do you think Nick Mullins, in his first start with the Vikings, is the igniter to something that they need offensively, AJ? Well, it's the NFL. We don't know ever it seems like really hard to predict but i'm taking the Bengals all day long here i love what jake browning is doing i i live in ohio i feel there's there's excitement back in cincinnati Ooh. now if they go out and lay an egg is there? then people will be right down in the dumper no question but i think for now people are very hopeful that the Bengals can can make a little bit of a run okay it's great to hear that yes that's great to hear because what we heard zach taylor say the other day whether he was bamboozled and is saying yeah. that or not it sounded like he was like hey a little reminder here yeah this game matters still. We're still in it. Yep. Let's go ahead and get down here. Now, Cincinnati Bengals fans said that we did not take what he was saying properly, and maybe they were right. Maybe we did overreact. But you don't hear like, you know, a lot of you don't you don't hear a lot of like you don't hear the Buffalo Bills coming out and saying, mm, nope. Hey Bills Mafia. Kind of need you this weekend. Need you to show up. Do need like, you to be loud on third downs. Yep, mm -hmm. Have like six or seven, four locos before you come in. Need you, which don't hear that. No. Don't hear it from Steichen, but the Lot House. No. Bingo. And if the Bengals had to play in the Loud House last weekend, oh, oh a whole different animal. Wouldn't have come out of the locker room. Now, follow up. I saw the Bengals last week, mm -hmm. and I don't know what's happening in the stands. I assume they're going to show up. Yes. Because those Bengals fans told us that we were way wrong, even though we heard what we heard, mm -hmm. how we heard it. That's yep. right. When we heard it. But correct. The way it was said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prove it, Cincy. On the field, I still think they got a, got a ball club. Yeah, yeah. stripe it up. That defense is going to be tough for Minnesota, though. Jake Browning will probably mm -hmm. make some mistakes. I think there's a chance that's going to happen. But in the end, they have more power than Minnesota has. They end up winning. Give me the Cincinnati Bengals. I appreciate the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, let's go to the 430 game. The Pittsburgh Steelers are traveling to the lot house. Here we go. The oh, Indianapolis yeah. Colts. Horse power. Colts are favored by one and a half, which is not normal this season. And the Steelers are getting one and a half because they can't score. Uh, on the offensive side, and everything has kind of gone to shit as of late. Yeah. Was it Matt Canada? We'll never know because I uh, haven't really been able to read much since then nope. because they have not looked great. Arizona Cardinals, they obviously lose. New England Patriots, they obviously lose. <laughs> this is back-to-back -back games that Steelers fans are calling for wholesale changes at the end of the year, even though they are still very much in the playoff conversation. Players around the Steelers organization, both in the locker room and out of the locker room, think that maybe a culture has been lost in the Pittsburgh Steelers organization. It's been very loud anti-Steelers this week. Yes. Scares the shit out of me as an Indianapolis Colt fan and a person that'll be there. AJ, how do you see this going? Well, I need to ask Diggs how he feels about this game before I make my uh, my pick here. Diggs, where are you, you right now with Diggs, your Steelers? Yeah, come on. Yep. I've never felt worse about a game in my entire oh, history boy. as a Steelers fan. That's every week. Yep. Every no, single not. week. That, no, you, you're not. a broken record, Diggs. Same thing. You're going to kill yourself. Whoa. Like, boom, this is how it goes. No, you just Whoa. don't pay attention. And you can't play both sides of the fence because you got on uh, Foxy earlier this week <laughs> for being too optimistic. So figure it out. Yeah. Did that really? Yeah. yeah no, yeah, I said yeah. his standard. He, he got he, he, His standards rose too quickly, I believe. So whenever you hear that from Diggs, which was the only answer that was coming out of his <laughs> mouth. Correct. Yeah. Gave yourself a little extra time to think about it, I think. Bang, er, uh, Colts all day long. Yeah. 
Right. Colts Gardner Minshew, the Loud House. I, I saw uh, Jim tweeted that the roof is closed. Correct. Keep the noise yeah, in. Loud. Think how loud that the the noise has nowhere to go, so oh. it's bouncing off of everything. <laughs> so it's going to be there for four straight doop, quarters. Doop. Oh. Second half, you're going to hear a lot of that. Yeah. Do you want to have a good time tonight? What's that answer? What is that? We don't know. We don't know what the accent is. Swedish? We've heard it, though, a couple different times. Mm-hmm. I mean, the city, too. The city is going to be packed because Purdue is playing against uh, Arizona mm-hmm. at Cambridge at the exact same time. Okay, so, and also Pittsburgh, not that far of a trip. Boom. A lot of, a lot of people in the middle of notes. America that can get to Indianapolis yeah. that feel like they have to represent the Steelers. Not saying that it isn't going to be a heavy majority mm-hmm. of Indianapolis Colts fans, but there's going to be a lot of out-of-towners coming into Indy this weekend as well. City's yeah. going to be popping. Yeah, I've got a few messages and notes uh, about people coming in, looking for recommendations and stuff like that. I assume it's going to be a decent, uh, terrible doc crowd. I've had a lot of people ask me if uh, they could just come sit in the suite or whatever. Sure. Oh, is that right? Yeah. The yeah I've, no. I've had a few ask if they could <laughs> just come uh, by the Thunderdome today and just hang out. No. Wait, did that call her? Thunderdome, I, nobody asked for that. I appreciate nobody asking for that because... You know, I don't mind seeing some people that we haven't sure. seen in a while. Yeah. But, like, that sweet thing that we get to sit in, like, that's like a date day for me and a wife. Mm-hmm. And it just hang out. got, like, perfect in there. A little just bit. got perfect. People, like, people don't I, – I, don't, I haven't heard a single person say, like, I hope you're enjoying yourself there. Everybody usually, like, oh, let me in there. Oh, I, see a lot of, I see a lot of seats open there. Let me come in. It's like this is literally the only time my wife and I really have – Outside the house mm-hmm. together, yeah. so just trying to enjoy it. And like those seats are open because we're watching all the other games. Like Inside. we're all going to be in those seats this weekend. I'm sure. pumped just to watch because it's only game. game. Yes. Game. Oh my god, it's like the I, Iowa bingo like yeah, Michigan I'm, game. Spotlight yeah. game. Jack to actually well, just the Florida watch. State game was happening as well. So was and it? as Iowa yeah. continues was it to do though? what yeah. Iowa does, mm-hmm. well, and that quite the indictment on Florida State. I mean, the Iowa game was a hell of a lot more entertaining than the that Iowa. game was very boring in Louisville. Yeah, that game had big implications. It did. Very large. It did. Yep. People are not happy about no. the implications. And still couldn't do it. Nope. Lawyer implications. Yeah. We're suing. Lawsuits were on the line in that game. Now that we look back, a lot was on the yeah. line. Yeah. Lawsuit games are 0-1. We should remember that. Yeah. James Madison was going to sue. Yep. Boom. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're 0-2. right. All right. 0-2. Florida State, Georgia. Okay. Orange Bowl. Can't wait. Let's go. Yeah. Can't Just wait. Just call yourself national. Whoever it is. Beat yeah. Georgia. Just call yourself national champs. That's right. I'll be a Florida State fan if they beat Georgia. I'm already a Florida State fan. Oh, Me I'm too. not. I think those I think those boys got screwed. I do. Mm-hmm. I agree. If I was on that team, I'd be so mad. So mad. Sure. If I if my boy was on that oh, team, boy. I'd be so mad. Raising hell. If I was a Florida State alum, I'd be mad. Yep. <laughs> but if I'm in that committee, you know, they're not thinking about their boys being on the team. No, they're not. They're not thinking about at all. They don't no. give a shit. They're thinking about who's the best team. And we're going to find out if the Florida State people were right about everything. Absolutely. When they take on the back-to-back national champions who probably also have a little bit of a gripe about not being in the college football playoff. Yep. Pissed off boys. I just hope guys play. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> on both teams. Probably not. Have we had a, yeah, is but, there any news on any of them? Has anyone opted out yet? I don't know. Everybody's basically just talked about them not. There's a lot of pros. That's a on tough them. draw for Florida State, by the way. Tough draw. Getting left out and then playing play in Georgia. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how 5-6 goes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm just saying, that's a tough one. If they're not... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you saying? You don't think... Georgia's very, very good. The back-to-back national champs. Like, oh, Florida you don't State think Florida very State's good very good? Yeah. They're undefeated. undefeated. No, they're awesome. Uh-huh. But now they're, they wow. didn't get in, but this they're the getting problem. tested against the team that hasn't lost until two weeks ago. Okay. You should want that. All right. They do. It's a great opportunity for them. You're right. I would do the UCF move. Yeah, I'm having go. a parade. Yep. I'm doing the whole thing if I'm Florida Absolutely. State and I win. Yeah. For sure. So. No doubt about it. Mm-mm. We're the national champs. Bingo. We just beat the national champs. We took their title. Yeah. That's what we did. Now, will people risk NFL careers for that potential not actually winning a national yeah, yeah. championship? That's, uh, that's the question. All right, let's get back to the against the spread, shall we? We were quite off course there. I'm taking the Colts as well. AJ's taking the Colts. Let's go. Let's have a week. Dip, dip, 
Hopefully we hear a lot of that. If we do, that means we have covered and won. Broncos, Lions, Lions favored by four and a half at home. Big conversation around this game is, is this the same old Lions? And is this the brand new Broncos? Yeah, that is what people are asking. Now, Foxy wouldn't even let us get it out because you wanted to chirp so hard about the Lions. <laughs> you feel like they're going to be back, it feels like, and everything's all good because Coach MCDC yeah. is going to have the boys bounce back in a big way. Exactly. Bounce back game. I think they're going to get to their old ways. Ground and pound football. Montgomery, Gibbs, run a lot of clock off that, or time off the clock. And then the defense doesn't even have to be on the field. Our lights are flickering out here because they're enjoying the dupe as yep. much as we have mm -hmm. been. He thinks they're grinding pound in their way to dubs. What do you think, AJ? I think they're definitely going to attempt to ground and pound. But for me, I think this is more of a, a brand new Broncos situation wow. we have Ooh. brewing. And the Lions are going to have to kind of prove it to themselves that they are who they were uh, a month or two ago. So, yeah, give me the Broncos plus four and a half. I'll take the Lions minus four and a half. Wow. Let's go. I believe. Ah, I believe, I believe that, I believe that they're the brand new Lions. Yeah, okay. I think he's had okay. a couple of rough weeks. Gotta yeah. find out. That's gonna okay. happen. Yep. Hey. Look back through the Cowboys season. They had a couple of rough weeks. Niners. Yeah. Only one. More Niners loss. had a couple of rough weeks. Only one more loss. That's that's the things. That's what happens. Yeah. You just have a couple of rough weeks, and you know that adversity actually acts like guardrails yeah, or bumpers for bowlers. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it gets you back on track. That yeah, does. That's right. So they hit one side. Who cares? They hit the other side. Who cares? Whatever. Now where are they going? Right in the pocket. Strike. Fucking strike! Yeah. yeah. That could be what we're experiencing here with the brand new Lions. You know what I think? I bet MCDC had them doing up-downs again. Probably. They did it all week, I bet. So they got their grip back. And he was doing it with them. They were exactly. better of. Yep. Give me the Lions. Hell yeah. Okay. Did he break his wrist doing that? Mm -mm. No, he had a broken wrist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Dog. Once again, head coach didn't have to. But. No. For the boys. Dog. Exactly. If you're going to ask that. His, want to make had his wrist taped for it. How many did they do? 30? They did a lot. Like the most. So many. So many in a row. When <laughs> to they're, start. They all probably thought they are doing about 10. The most I've ever seen done in a practice on that hard knocks. For sure. Yeah. The most. Once they blew by 10. And it was like nowhere near stopping. No. I couldn't even have fathomed the reactions by everybody on that field. Yeah. What are we doing? And you look up and MCDC's over here. Yeah. Yeah. How many more we got? And MCDC's wondering the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many of these fucking things we doing? That was the team that we remembered. That was the brand new Lions. They got to be back. They're back. Anybody playing at halftime of that game? Oh. Uh, hopefully oh. hardly is he. I'm pretty sure he ruined that. Let's take halftime off. Huh? Let's just take it off. Whoa. You don't want a halftime? You just want to play four straight quarters? Yep, that'll work. Have like some Frisbees and yep. dogs and stuff. Yeah, I'd Ooh, frisbees break. and dogs are really cool. Yeah. They're always good. Got to have a good thrower, though. You know, so I've met a couple of them now. There's numerous groups of human dog tag teams that yep. do the frisbee thing. Mm -hmm. I've met a lot of them now. Some of them, you can tell that the human thinks they're the show. Right. They're not. Jeez, the yep. You know what I mean? You yeah. can tell. Some yeah. of them, you meet them, and they're like, yeah, I, I got to get warm, you know. It's like, I understand. I appreciate that. I'm going to throw one 80, 82 yards here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, sweet. Sure. So that dog's running 82 yards, jumping up and catching this thing on the other end. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, yeah. yeah, that's the... Uh, if I can hit him. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. thing. And then you go out there and they're fucking rolling it. It's like, come on. Buddy, have it. Come on. You're and, killing your dog. In those stadiums, too, it's tough because if they get it too high, mm -hmm. dog loses it in the backdrop. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, because there's a lot of humans and yep. everything. There's this one dog we saw at the Lucas Oil Stadium was taking a long, long shot. A real huck. Diesel. I believe is what it's called. And it, you could tell the dog lost it two different times while it was flying through the sky and found it and then lost it and then found it diving catch at the end. It's mm -hmm. like, well, the kickoff. that's, that's the show. The, yeah. The kickoff that's team the was on the field at that time, too. There was a couple footballs that were flying at the same time. It wasn't that well coordinated, but much like Harlow's. Right. Not Harlow's fault, right. not the dog's fault. Well, the Lions will have that figured out as well. How about instead of a dog, we actually have a lion Bingo. and we do Frisbee with that? Now we're talking. Yeah, Frisbee with like a human, though. Yeah. Like send out a one of the bums head. that lives around Detroit. So this past weekend, I saw on the internet actually one of the greatest dunks of all time. And maybe we could just utilize this device and then put it out there for the, fuck, for the fucking chase down. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is one of the greatest dunks that you guys have never seen. Um, 
Fox, can you run this, please? We need more of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then I'm going to count <laughs> down this. five, four, three, two, one. Yep. You're going to shoot me. Hat's going to hit the ceiling. Yep. Hold my breath. Down, oh, ball, Dave. dunk, <laughs> land, and bow. Okay, here we go. First countdown. So nervous. Five, okay. four, I'm gonna do it. three, two, one. Go. Multiple cameras. All right. All right, Stopping. I'm going up. No, we're not. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what was that? <laughs> what? Was that real? We're stopping. <laughs> no, we're not. No, no. <laughs> What happened there? All, I've never seen that. How have I not seen that? Yeah, uh, I know. It's, it's all time. <laughs> Holy all shit. Is he okay? No. I hope so. He died right there. No. no. I mean, he died he a while ago. No, he, I think he died, but later, not due to this. No, they just had to attach the hoop to his waist, so he's just Dude. walking around with a basketball. Think about how confident he was <laughs> that that was Wait, what okay. was going to happen? I don't, I didn't, he, I couldn't his follow his instructions. He was going to shoot up. Yep. And then he was going to come down. Hold and his gonna, breath. Oh, man. So we get that. <laughs> Shoot, he shouldn't be dunking it. That should be on the field somewhere. For a catch. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's no way. And it hurts so bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have that guy with the dogs catching him. Yes. Sure. That's the right play. That's the only way to bounce back from Jack Harlow's situation, where he was set up for failure. I would like to echo that sentiment. He was set up for failure. There was no way he was going to do good there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. That, that thing we run where opinions don't necessarily reflect the others. Uh -huh. I think this is one of those situations because I put this solely on Jack Harlow. What? And I, I, I truly believe. Did you see what he walked out of? I, I he walked out of like a Christmas decoration. Yeah. I think he did it on purpose because are we talking about Dolly Parton? Nope. Are we talking about whoever the other half? Steve Aoki. Steve Aoki? Nope. We're talking about Jack Harlow still three weeks removed from the yeah. worst. Dolly won the day. She was talking about most that day. Mm-hmm. But who, won, who won the war? It's not good, though, what's being said. I agree. Is this all pub is good pub, Con? Is that what you think? I just think it's just, it's keeping him around right now. Harleasy <laughs> did not deserve what happened to him on that field. Tonight, we've been told it's the junior cheerleaders. Oh, oh nice. Good. So that'll that's, be good. That's good that'll good be good, inspiring. Yeah. That'll yeah. be super positive at halftime. Uh, or this weekend. Give me the Lions. Okay. Congrats to the Lions. Probably uh, yeah. being all the way back. Let's go to the Bears and the Browns. Uh, Browns, three-point favorites at home with Joey Flacco on a brand new deal as Hell the quarterback. Yeah. I think he can earn up to $4 million in incentives. Three of them, though, are Super Bowl components involved. <laughs> one, uh, one million gets uh, if they win a Super Bowl, or two million they win a Super Bowl, one million if they make it to the Super Bowl. So I, I don't know what his base salary is, but Joey Flacco took a deal to be the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, and he's in an offensive system that he's very comfortable with, in a division that he's very, very, very comfortable in, yeah. and with a team that has the pieces, even though they've suffered a lot of injuries, to still go on a deep run. And the Chicago Bears... They're a whole new team. They are. Don't look now. Don't look now. The Chicago Bears are playing football both on the offensive side what? and the defensive side. Mm -hmm. what? That's crazy to think. Yes. This isn't like a Justin Fields stinks conversation anymore. It's what? like Justin Fields is being utilized in the proper way and the offense is rolling. And on defense side of the ball, they give $100 million to a guy from another team in the middle of the season. So it seemingly changes yeah. the entire narrative about the defense as well. Instead of shipping everybody that's good off the defense, they actually brought somebody good in on defense, mm -hmm. and it changed them. AJ, you like the Chicago Bears, or do you like Joey Flacco's Cleveland Browns, pal? Well, I am having a tough time picking against Joey Flacco, especially with the new deal, the new incentives, how confident he must feel. He seems to be re-energized as well. Didn't I, I believe I saw a clip where Ryan Clark said Joe Flacco auditioned to do uh, Inside the NFL or one of these shows. I don't know how Auditioned. long ago this was, but he, didn't get he was yeah he did like a screen minute. test or something, or they brought him in. And Ryan said, "I'm glad we didn't I'm glad we didn't sign him because he's out there in the field doing his thing now." So Joe has a new oh lease on life, God. I believe. Jeez. Joe Flacco got turned down from doing a show. I don't know if he got turned down, but he said that on ESPN, I believe. Ryan Clark did a couple days ago, maybe three, four, or five days ago. Who's turned down Joey Flacco? Yeah, you got a great question. Me. Good question. We can't find a place for Joe Flacco with yeah. a microphone? No. Sunday Night Football? Did we know Joe Flacco was potentially getting into the TV? But we're in the TV business now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. now we Footsteps. know. Footsteps. Holy shit. Give, give me the brass. What are we talking about? What? The guy said one interesting thing in his entire career. He was on our show. He was. Yeah. What was, was that interesting direct. thing? And he didn't want to kind of take everything away from the team. That's why he didn't open his mouth, because he knows everything he says is fucking gold. Bingo. What do you say on the show, on our program? Hey, guys. Hey. 
And he walked off. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking electric. Ovation. Yeah, give me that guy. Yeah. I'd Plus, say. that Browns defense at home, very different. True. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason. They need to figure that out. Yeah. They need to figure because out. of what's going to happen. They're going to have to go play, play on the road. Okay. Next game is the Jets and the Dolphins. Dolphins favored by nine and a half at home down in that Miami humidity. The Jets obviously coming off their best half of football that they've played all year. The Dolphins coming off a loss to the Tennessee Titans. Still two score favorites. How do you see it? A.J. Hawk. Where, where is Tyreek at in his hole? Is he good to go? Yeah. They're yes. saying probably not. Yeah, not practiced He's today. Not practiced. Questionable, hasn't practiced. But okay. once again, Tyreek, very durable mm -hmm. for how explosive and fast and everything that he is. He has been one of the most durable players in the NFL. Even when it looks like he's broken his ankle, he's able to play a couple quarters later sparingly in interestingly chosen plays uh, like we saw on Monday night. Very. How do you feel about it, Gumpy? You think questionable means yeah or questionable means McDaniel's rule of I want my guys to be 100% before they get back on a football field? Everyone else who's out, he is ruled out. I think Tyreek plays the bigger issue right now if Tyreek does play is our center um, just practiced with the team for the first time an hour ago and has not played in the NFL in three years. Okay, he brought him in from somewhere else? Yeah, he was uh, laying on his couch watching Netflix. He is absolutely jacked, though. So, uh, Who is it? Jonathan. Ooh, Majors? No, Jonathan Harrison. Okay. John Harrison? Yeah. From Florida? University uh, of Florida? I think he's huge, jacked. I think. Uh, he's a former <laughs> teammate of mine, maybe. He's been a... Uh, Funny. Spells Jonathan kind of funny. Two T's in it. Yeah. Yes. J O N O T T H A N. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, all the reports are saying he is absolutely jacked right now. Hold on. If this is the same. Yeah, Florida. Yeah. Because yeah, he said Pouncey's. I wanted him on our punt team because of how athletic he was. Here we go. So we weren't playing him at center because we paid somebody to play center or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I was. He's so athletic. Like, so athletic. I want him to be on the damn punt team. I had to like pitch for like numerous weeks. I'm like, can we get old buddy just on punt team? Doesn't have to cover. I'll get a fair catch, but like he is so fast, so athletic. He can get somebody in space. Let's do it. They practice him a couple times, and inevitably the decision was made not to have an offense alignment on the punt team, sure. which I am not happy about. <laughs> I was pushing hard for it. He's also a cool dude. Good vibes. 300 you know? pounds right now. Did a body fat test today. They said he was 14. He said, that is wrong. I know I'm 11. Okay. <laughs> <So> apparently, <laughs> apparently he is ready to go. Nice. Missing piece. Hey, nice. he's, I, I'm, I was a big fan of him. as a pro. I don't think I got to see him play much. I don't think we got to see him play much because he was back in AQ might have been. Around even when he was there, it said 2014 to 2016 is when he was on the Colts. Yeah, so I think AQ was there mm. during that period. Yeah, he would know him better than than I would, but I didn't know he was still. Hell yeah! Hey, hey baby, Jonathan. Yeah, go Johnny. I have faith in him. I do. Athlete, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay. Athlete. And that's huge in Love Miami's that. offense. They're Need running. That. Yeah, especially with how they're moving. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Jets line, too. Yeah, with how great yeah. they are. Especially Teron, in uh, Teron Armstead should be back as well, which is huge Ooh. for the O-line. Okay. All right, Speaking nine and a half. Time. How do you feel about it, AJ? Nine and a half sure seems like a lot of points, but it is the Dolphins' offense. We know what they are capable of. But give me the Jets here. I like what the Jets' defense is doing, and I think Zach kind of keeps some of that magic going. Is Aaron playing? I don't know. That's a good question. What's this line go out of Aaron and all of a sudden gets thrust into the lineup? Honestly, I don't know. Three. Six. Yeah, six and a half. I put it at three. Is, is he even active? Like, don't, they, don't they still the – Something would have to happen, right? If he ever did come back, he'd have to get activated somehow and they'd have to put someone down. You tell me. What are you hearing? That's what I'm asking, though. He's, is he still in that 21-day window or whatever? Yes. So if for some reason he ever did play, we'd hear about some, there'd be some kind of transaction yep. before. Could happen on a Saturday, though, right? Could, for sure. He's been yeah. hopping around. Mm -hmm. Miami warm. Yeah. Back out there today. You know, not a bad, you know, don't have to worry about being cold. Holy shit. Aaron Rodgers, QB, Achilles, did not participate. And then Thursday, limited participation. Wow. They opened the window on the 29th. The fuck, dude? LP? That means limited participation, right? Look out. That's how that's listed, what he did yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's not like after practice he threw it to boys. He was a limited participant in practice today. Right. Mm -hmm. He said he was doing some seven on sevens with flight school afterwards, right? Yes. What do you know? 
I don't know anything. What do you mean? What did you think it would say other than limited? I thought he would just be on his own. Yeah. You know, like Jimmy G. They got to list him as something, though, don't they? Yeah, DMP maybe, because like limited participant is in practice, right? The actual practice time, because they can hide all that shit if he does it before practice, after practice. They can do, you know. Yeah, but if we if there's video of him doing anything when the media is there, then they're gonna have to say limited, right? They're gonna have to say something. You're right. He's not Zach Wilson playing this week. Maybe next yeah. week. Though. How's he playing? Best game of his career last week. How's right. he playing against yeah. Vic Fangio and the boys? You think down there? I'm not sure. You think so? You don't think? Well, what about Christian it. Wilkins? How's he doing? Is he healthy? I saw him with a big time dance the other night. Oh yeah, he, he had a sweet dance the other night. Javon Holland should be back too, which is huge for our back end as how, well. How's Van Dinky? Van Dinky a bit of an off game last game. Didn't we? We only had oh, one no. sack last game. So he'll bounce back. Yeah. yeah, it does feel like a hey, we're still the Miami Dolphins. You know, Zach Wilson's a sweet boy. Sweet, sweet boy. boy, kind, good boy, and we want a good story, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah. we do. <clears throat> Bob Sala ain't gonna get boat raced. No. Nope. Well, I, I don't know if I'd say that, but Bob Sala will have. What's the history between Jets and Dolphins? How's it go? How's Bob Sala's Jets do against the Dolphins? I mean, last year very good. This year we boat raced them in New York. Yeah, remember the ninety nine yard that was, uh, uh, end of half. Pick that was six. Timmy Black Boyle Friday. slinging it around. That Black was Friday ball Friday game. That, oh that, yeah, that, that was one terrible. Count. That was a bad game. All right, give me the Jets plus nine and a half. Dolphins win though, obviously. Yep. Uh, which sounds so. Let's hope. Better. Gump, you guys can't crumble. That would be Titans. Jets I know we back. can't. I can't take it. If, if This is so massive, too, just because if they lose this one and the Bills beat the Cowboys, then it will come down to week 18. Yeah, and then you start thinking about Baltimore, what they're doing. Yep. And it's like all of a sudden the AFC looks a little bit different. I crowned the Dolphins four or five different times this year. Yeah, hard not to. This is years and years of pain. I talked to my dad about this. He said after the Titans scored the first touchdown, he just went to bed because he knew we were going to lose. <laughs> like Beast. this is this dad, is years Beast. of pain. This is the brand new Dolphins. This is years I, of pain. I respect here. that so much. Apple doesn't fall far. Let's go to the next game. Yeah, you couldn't fall asleep because you stay up all night, but you would have done the same if you could have. Giants versus Saints, six point favorites. At home are the Saints with Tommy DeVito coming down to the Superdome. AJ, how do you feel the Italian conglomerate will do down in New Orleans? So Derek Carr is all right, right? He's playing, he's healthy? Yeah, Always. unless there was a fight this week. We don't know. Oh, hopefully not. Yeah, and I don't like what I saw on the field, you know, with Ian Samo lineman, but I'm sure they have that figured out. Six points does seem like a lot. But, man, I just don't know about the New York football giants. I love Tommy DeVito and what right. he can do. Hmm. But give me the Saints at home. That's a tough barn to play in. We know that. That is a tough barn. Tommy DeVito grew up in a tough house. That's right. Yeah. In yeah. a tough time. You keep mm-hmm. talking the way you're talking, you're going to find yourself sleeping with the fishes. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Tonight you wake up, big fucking horse head sitting that's right next to right. mm-hmm. you. You know what that means? That's a heads up. That's what that is. That's Ooh. not just a horse head. That's a heads up. Oh, I'm not Italian. I don't know anything about this. You're lucky. We know. You're super Italian. We know. <laughs> Got Italian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You should get that tattooed somewhere. Italian horn? Over your heart. Maybe like, yeah. you know Brock Lesnar's tattoo? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. massive you horn. Got horn. Huge one. Yep. All the way up to my throat. Up to your chin. Bring that thing all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right up to your lip. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'd be funny. Yeah. We I, wonder, get- I wonder if I could work at Stilato Enhanced Sports. Probably. Sports. sports. Sure. He calls it SES Sports. He didn't say anything when you called it Stilato Enhanced Sports. Sports. Because he calls Do it we S- know what it is? Yeah. Yes. What I just said. S he calls it S E S Sports. It's called Stilato Enhanced Sports. 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 That's what S E S stands for. You're serious? You're serious though? Yes. Yeah, a couple of his captions he goes, big, That's awesome. Big time for S E S sports here. Tommy DeVito mm-hmm. signs with blah 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 from May first. And then you look up what S E S stands for, it's Stilato Enhanced Sports is SES. So then when he adds another sports on the end, it's Stilato Enhanced Sports. 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 And it's like, I love that. It's like dodgeball. You love Man, sports. It's so good. It's twice. Mm-hmm. I love Sean Stilato. I love Tommy DeVito. Yep. Yeah. Give me the cutlets. Hell yeah. Plus six right. down in New Orleans. Why not? Yeah. He could spin it. I mean, mm-hmm. people forget he's a lead eleven quarterback coming up. Yeah, yeah. Right. This is Heisman, uh, dark horse Heisman. Dark horse Heisman. Beat Tua, Heisman. Beat Tua, Tua in the Oregon situation. Yep, yeah, you're damn right. People forget about that. Uh, let's go, Kansas City Chiefs, New England Patriots. Eight and a half points. Bills getting at home. AJ, 
Obviously, there's been a lot of things chatted about around the New England Patriots this week due to a report out of NBC Sports Boston's Tom E. Curran. Con man, eight and a half point dogs at home. Never thought we'd see the day, but it is the Kansas City Chiefs. Your thoughts? Yeah, I told you guys this uh, earlier before the show, and this is the first time I've done this this year. A lot of the times in previous years I've said this, but this is like the most obvious Patriots cover of all time. The, the, they are the perfect embodiment of a team that actually hasn't quit on their coach, a la the Chargers. And I, I would assume they're just going to do the clamp Kelsey with the number two put their number one on Rice, no Pacheco for the Chiefs. Let's see if Sky Moore, Tony, Jarek McKinnon can kind of beat the Pats on their own, but obviously this is Patrick Mahomes. They are also in the Dolphins kind of bounce back game here, hitting a little bit of a skid. So Yeah, they're in the Eagles territory. Yeah, bingo. But I, I, uh, I, I do actually think that the Patriots will cover eight and a half. Okay, AJ, does that change anything for you? It, honestly, Conman has me rethinking my thoughts because I was thinking KC all the way from the jump here. I don't know why. I think bounce back game. They know this is when it truly matters. Yep. Connor made me think about it a little bit, but I'm still taking the Chiefs here. All right, give me Bill Belichick yeah. and Bob Kraft plus eight and a half at home. Hell yeah. It's a lot of points. For a, for it's a, it's a Belichick defense, yeah. you know? And I, But I'm expecting this Chiefs defense to score or set up a couple scores. Who's playing quarterback for you guys? Zappy. Zip. Zip, Zip on the ball just went into, you know, Pittsburgh and stole Renegade for us. So, yeah, he, he's no, cut. No, he did got not. Lombardi. You didn't get Renegade. Well, I think we said, okay, fine. We'll leave the Lombardi. We'll take Renegade. Did you take that, the one, right, Sticks member that mm-hmm. was doing this? No, no, we left, we left his bum ass in Pittsburgh. Whoa, whoa don't you hey, ever say whoa, that. Whoa, whoa. He was a part of the band that grew. Oh, mama, I'm in fear for my life from the long, long, of the long. I do hope that the person that runs the music at the Loud House knows not to play that particular song. Yeah. You should probably let them know. You would think. I, legit, yeah. I don't normally think like that. Normally you just have... <laughs> The idea that everybody knows, but that might be something that isn't known. They should probably stay away from any oh, no. No, 70s, remember, uh, 80s rock song. Last year, they tried yeah. to fake everybody out. They played the first half of the song. Oh, yeah, and boy, and did that put, go wrong. Put like a psych and a bunch of clown pictures up on the screen, but the <laughs> crowd was, was still late. fired up already. Yeah, the Lion House wow. does roll the dice a little bit. They're, <laughs> they're not scared to try some stuff out. That's the old Lion House. No, it's very <laughs> real. Very real currently. I don't know who's making all the decisions. At the Loud House? Probably Jim. I try to find out, though, you know, each week. But they, they change these things each week, too. Oh, yeah. There'll be a whole new. Decisions have been pretty good. I yeah. mean, Eagle was Great. unbelievable. World's largest drum. Great. Sick. Sick. I mean, Duke. Jim Irsay dancing. Jim Irsay yep. dancing. Great. Doop, 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 doop. Doop mm-hmm. is good. They have the square that bounces around. Fun. Will it hit the corner? That's oh, a yeah. great Shell game. game, always a crowd pleaser. Yep. The, the garbage toss. Awesome. Garbage toss, pretty good. Gorman at halftime is great. The jugs machine punt. Mm-hmm. Much yeah. better. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. It's been a step Did up. You write a book. <laughs> What's amazing. that? You guys going through all of the amazing things they do. They should write a book on like game day experiences, and they could sell that everywhere. I don't know if the cult should, but I appreciate that they probably read the book from somebody else that did yeah. it because they've yeah. certainly upped their game. They did have some oversized dice that they rolled down an audience section mm-hmm. from, like, the top level. And what the numbers were were uh, obviously associated with the winner. I think the way the dice were made, not by the Colts, one side was heavier than the other sides. Mm-hmm. So the same number came up four straight times. You're talking loaded die? Two, sure. two, 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 two. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it was right. awesome. It's a magic trick. Yeah, I mean. Didn't mean to be. Did they drop little parachutes from the ceiling with, like, coupons for pizza? Oh, yeah. Sam, my okay. wife, obviously tries to win one of those every single. It's a big hit. It is big. Oh, eyes in the sky. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> parachutes come down. The Loud House is a different animal. And if they got Adam Vinatieri or somebody smashing that anvil, yeah. the Loud House is going to be obnoxious it. Tomorrow. If I'm not mistaken, first overall pick of the Indiana Fever, Aaliyah Boston, is smashing the anvil. Yes. <laughs> Tell Caitlin Clark to come play for the Fever. She wants to hit the anvil. Yeah. yeah. This year or next year? Whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. No, this year she would have to. De- after this year, she would have to declare. Next year, we might have a chance, outside chance of getting her. What? The Fever. Just lose every game, right? That's all you got to do. Well, everybody needs to relax. The fever or 
It's called a fucking wagon. It's called yeah. basketball. Thing. Aaliyah. Aaliyah is a fucking wagon. Yeah, she is the future. Yeah. Feverish. Her and, yeah, fever pitch yeah. about the conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the next catch game. The, catch the fever. You know what they say? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Feel the fever, asshole. You can catch one. Nah. So, Bucks, Packers. Packers need it. Have to have it. True. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are coming off a game-winning drive by Baker Mayfield against the Falcons. They're getting three and a half in Lambeau. AJ, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. How do you see it going? What's the health like for the offense in Green Bay? Is uh, uh, AJ, Christian back? AJ Dillon, I believe, is going to be out. He broke his thumb uh, last Ooh, week wow. in uh, the Giants game. But Aaron Jones is trending to play, and I Ooh. believe Christian Watson uh, should be back as well. Okay. Oh, Christian Great. Watson's back? I believe so. That's game changer for me, I think. Go ahead, AJ. If he's back, yeah, I want to see some shots down the field to him. I think that dude is, is very, very good, and he's only getting better every week. So, yeah, give me the Packers minus three and a half at home. I agree. Give me the Packers minus three and a half as well. I feel like uh, Jordan Love, you know, first year playing, a little bit of a roller coaster. Yep. It's going to be up. He answers, I think. Let's go Houston Texans, Tennessee Titans, fresh off a win over the Dolphins. They're favored by three. Titans are wearing their Houston yeah. Texans, or Houston or, Oilers. Yes. Throwbacks. And JJ Watt. Pissed. In their face. Yeah. Yeah. Right in their face. So, Tone Diggs talked about how this is the mm. game for him. This mm-hmm. is the sweet spot right here. Houston Texans have their worst game. Mm-hmm. C.J. Stroud still in concussion protocol. We shall see how it goes. Might have to play a backup quarterback. Who knows? We'll keep uh, an eye on the situation. But they play their worst game, so all of a sudden a little overreaction. This mm-hmm. team stinks is what we thought they were. Mm-hmm. Titans play their best game. Mm-hmm. Overreaction. Holy shit, this team. Look out. First time rookie quarterback's ever thrown for 300 on prime time. Yep. Hope you enjoy that, America. Hard knocks. They're on it. Tony, you love the Houston Texans. I just love like the situation. And the Texans just all year have been the better team. And they're the dog. Like a, if if let's just say things would have went differently last week, they probably would have been favored in this situation. And they probably should be favored in this situation. Add in the Houston Oilers jerseys. AJ, who do you like? Well, can I make can I put a little caveat or whatever they say? If CJ Stroud is in, give me the Texans. If he's out, I want the Titans. Yep. Okay, there we go. I'll take the Texans. Mm, no matter what, okay. Yeah, good. I like it. D'Amico game. Like, there is so much to pull from. You you would hope that D'Amico just has them ready to roll. And I love Rabel. And I, I do. I, I, I'm a huge Rabel fan. I just – his kid's starting this weekend. Yep. Congrats yep. to him. Huge. Awesome. Yeah. Tyler Vrabel? Yeah. Tyler. Big Tyler. Yep. Tyler. Did you yep. see Tyler and uh, Colin Morikawa hitting golf balls? I did. I did it. Whoa. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Where are you Where? trying to take that? Hitting golf balls. No, from Tyler from Dude Perfect. From yes. Burnley, oh. yes, from Burnley. Right. Yeah, Tyler from Dude Was Perfect he and Burnley. Golf balls? Great swing. Tyler? Yeah. Yeah. Tyler Burnley's <laughs> a stick. Tyler's a fucking stick. Yeah. He is a... Well, he's skilled at everything, so... I, legit. So, Colin Morikawa and he were hitting golf balls through two glass panes. It was like the big break back in the day. Oh, I yeah, love, love that. that. Oh, yeah. Great That's show. Awesome. That show needs to come back. Yeah, agreed. It was yep. like the, the big break... So these glass panels go from like six feet in, in, mm-hmm. in, and Tyler hit everyone except for the one that was only golf ball width, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Lined up right in front, full swing at this thing. Looked like a seven iron, maybe. Call Morikawa splits it of course. right through. That's the difference. Tyler blows up the right mm-hmm. glass. It was pretty. Tyler's got it. Tyler's good. Tyler's really good. He is. Athlete. Let's move to the next game. <laughs> Why don't you talk about how good of an athlete Tyler is? Say it. Tyler from Dude Perfect? Yeah. Is that who we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. You've he's a stud athlete. athlete. He's amazing. What do you mean? He can do everything. Like I've seen their. Did they build that that new headquarters yet? No, that yeah. was a museum. I think they do have a brand new headquarters. They do. Come on, let's go to Falcons Panthers. Falcons favored by three on the road against Carolina mm. Panthers, who, you know, I think have a lot of question marks <laughs> about that. about everything. Just absolutely everything. AJ. You like Artie Smith and the boys to win by more than three in Charlotte. That's a tough, that's a tough barn, remember. It is. Yeah. They got that that Jaguar, yeah. that yeah. Panther. AI uh-huh. Panther. The AI Panther Goes that nuts. bounces around. I think it's more of like a stick figure Panther now with the 45 cent tickets that are going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you literally that's give real. Was that tickets. real? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. So hopefully there's a lot of Falcons fans that come fill that place up. Not Ooh. too far, probably, for them mm-hmm. to come. But yeah, you saw. You felt Artie's moxie today. Yeah, he, he was feeling himself, feeling the mustache, but in a nice, humble way. Like, yeah, we're just about to hit our stride 
as a team. So, yeah, give me the Falcons on the road as dog or uh, as favorite. Agreed. Me as well. Let's go to the next. What's up? This is the last one. I figured I'd bring it up. Seven one o'clocks, three four o'clocks once again. So they fucked it up. Like Packers, Bucks should be at four. <sighs> What's the reasoning behind this? Do I don't we know? know? That's why I brought it up because I have no idea. They it, have Saturday too. Exactly. It was already set up. Yes. It is kind of nice though because we got two poop bowls and then we got the Cowboys bill, so you can kind of yeah. just, just pay attention to that. that one. Just think of it as a, a lone primetime game. I don't want to watch the Rams and the Niners. Let's go to Commies, Rams. Rams, six and a half point favorites at home. AJ, who do you like? I like the Rams here, minus six and a half at home. Me as well. Let's go to the Niners Cardinals game. 12 point favorites in Ooh. Arizona. If you remember a couple years ago, Arizona was the home place of the San Francisco 49ers yeah. when they got kicked out of their stadium in Santa Clara due to COVID regulations. This team with the San Francisco 49ers, seemingly the hottest team in the NFL. I understand the Dallas Cowboys are doing their thing as well, but the Niners are bullies. That's just how they've played. 12 points feels like a lot for an NFL game, but with the Arizona Cardinals, you never know, especially this season. Yes. AJ, you like the Niners like I do? Mm, I do like the Niners here. I think they are too good right now to, to pick against them. So even though 12 is a lot, I'll take the Niners. They did not cover the 14 last week against Drew Locke. Just also throwing mm. that out there. 12 is a lot. It is. We just saw a team win by 40. Yeah, they, they won by 12 well. last yeah. week, actually. Give me the Niners. Cowboys, mm. Bills. Mm. Bills favored by two and a half in Buffalo. Yesterday, Lombo, when I asked him about the weather in Orchard Park, New York, he said it's going to be fine, 40 or whatever it yeah. is. Overnight, I guess, that has changed. The weather is supposed to be crop. Oh, yeah, the weather. No. Sunday really? is now 84% uh, chance of rain pretty much all day. And right. what's the temp? Uh, night 42, day 50. Okay, so, so not bad. Just mid rain, rain yeah, mid 40s. It could be much worse, Turf. obviously, for both sides. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys have become an absolute wagon with Mike McCarthy leading the way with Dak. Josh Allen and the boys got a huge win, huge win over the Chiefs because of a technicality that was called on one of the later plays of the game. Two and a half point favorites at home. How do you see it going, A.J. Hawk? Quick question. So if Kadarius Tony is not offsides and the Bills lose that game, are they dogs in this game? Probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either way, I'm taking the Cowboys plus two and a half. I can't believe – I mean, I should say I do believe it, but I am a bit surprised they're underdogs. Okay. I'll take the Cowboys as well, plus two and a half, just because of how good they've played. You're going to have to show yeah. me that the Cowboys are no longer the Cowboys, yep. even though everybody's calling for the Cowboys' demise. Yeah. 40-some in rain, that's not that bad. No, not at all. No, no, no. If it was snow, freezing – you know, sure. that type of stuff. Yeah. I think that would definitely affect them, and I would give the edge to the Buffalo Bills. And that Buffalo defense has been very good, but I like the way the Dallas Cowboys have been playing. All right, do we have another one? Yep. Sunday night. Oh, yeah. The real one. Is that Keith? Or Keith. Keith yeah, Van Keith's Noy. up there. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson. Bud. Trevor Lawrence. Bud. ETN. Bud. The whole world will be watching. As we find out if the Jacksonville Jags are what they have been the last few weeks or if they are for real yet again with Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence on the way. And the Ravens win a game in overtime on a punt return. They've been the most complete team on the AFC side this entire season. And the offense is only getting better with Munkin's first season calling the plays for Lamar Jackson, who in the middle of a shit storm last week was piecing apart the Rams defense. All of them. Favored by three and a half down in do AJ, your pick. I like the Jags here at home. The three and a half kind of gets me. And I, I mean, I think Keith Van Oy, he may have one or two sacks. He may even have more than that. I think he's going to have a great game, but I think the Jags find a way to cover here. This, if the juice is correct and it's even on the three, minus three and a half, this one's definitely going to move down to three. All right, so we'll take it at three. I'll take uh, Ravens minus three. <laughs> I'll take the Jags plus three and a half. Then uh, okay. are we taking it? What, are we taking what it's at now, or what it's going to become? Well, normally we do right now. So, but there's uh, <laughs> I'll take it to three if it becomes three. Yeah, I'll take okay. three and a half too. Well, I like the Ravens. 
We have yeah, been okay. doing too. Uh, you get the best of each spread. Yeah, but not since ESPN bets come along. True. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How is ESPN bet doing? Not bad. Not bad. How do we know? Let's. Let's. Uh, I'm holding my breath. It's been good to me. <sighs> actually, I enjoy it. What happened? What's going on back? Well, You've been losing your bets? No, actually. I had a great night last night. But that's not where my gripe is. Well, congratulations on a great night. Thank you. I appreciate it. Only, I think I only have to bet nineteen thousand more dollars to get my deposit match. So we're no, almost there. Bonus. Well, there you go. Just what else was that other thing? The parlay push. Uh, that's bull- oh that's my, bullshit. Yeah, that's that that is still that, that is tough. Guy had like an eight, eight leg parlay, and I think he pushed one leg, and they just said, "Nope, sorry, you lose." Kind of as a loss. That's and only only place that would do that. That's unheard of. That's yeah. gambling, baby. No, it's not. It's the opposite. That's gambling, baby. Uh, I mean, the book can do whatever the, you know? Yeah. Exactly. That's in the rules? That's communism, baby. There's a couple things. I mean, they could they could get away with saying, yeah, that was the right play from their standpoint. Mm-hmm. They could do that. But it seems like overwhelmingly the gambling community has been like, come on. Yeah. This get that out joke. of there. Adjust the odds. I assume that'll get figured out. I assume that'll get figured out. Three weeks removed. I don't know. I don't know. This situation is going to happen again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this isn't, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, how, how more pissed are you if you're the first one? How about them launching? Well, they would have to make it right with that. But the um, the first, the launching of midseason, that was an aggressive move. Well, for sure. Have day. not heard that they crashed, right? Have not, is not no. anything like that? So. I will say that uh, thing, like, especially, like, with us traveling and stuff, bouncing state to state, like, that stuff is very good. Like, the tech, it, what we used to say sometimes, you know, like, you'd have the geolocation stuff and it just, like, it would just fucking suck, and you wouldn't be able to sign in because it would just be like, no, 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 you're not in Indiana or whatever. This one is actually very good with like, oh, okay, you're in a different state. Do you want all of your your funds to be available to you? And like, it, it actually is very good with that. Well, congrats to ESPN bet. Got oh, yeah. figure it all out, but they will. Yeah, they New will. to the game. That's right. New to the game. Definitely get it right. Have- AJ, how's the weekend? You coaching? Uh, no, I'm not coaching uh, this weekend, but now, you know, we have games and everything. Getting close to Christmas. Christmas break starts next week. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's about to be a madhouse. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's good time. It's a fun time of year, man. It's a good time right now. Anyone on the naughty list or everyone on the nice list? Yeah. Uh, we'll see. It's not Christmas yet. Everyone's still constantly competing to try to get on that uh, nice list. This weekend, make sure you enjoy the hell out of DoorDash. Uh, enjoy $0 delivery fees and reduced service fees on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. Sign up for Dash Pass and get your first month free from our friends at DoorDash. DoorDash has changed the entire world. Yes, have. they have. The amount of DoorDash usage at just this office Oh. Absurd. I couldn't even imagine everywhere else. Oh, Neighborhood favorites delivered. Thank you for making it happen, DoorDash. Oh, yeah. If you haven't got on board with DoorDash yet, it legit changes your life. Oh, great commercials. Changes your life. Great commercials. Yeah, yeah just silence in that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Holding up the QR code. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of them. Not only what they do, but the humans that are representing of them. I've got a chance to chat with them. Good people. They just want to make the world easier and more convenient. And, you know... Try to make it right, you know, like the tipping. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yes, the express option so mm-hmm. it doesn't go. Your food doesn't go to another house yep. before get it ice cold. Sure. Yeah, the support system. Yeah, every it feels like in ability to get refund Bingo. if you don't. Yep. Do it. It's it is. Hey. hey, I'm busy right now. Just fucking drop my shit off on my front porch and I'll come get it eventually. Love that. Thank you, DoorDash. Love Thank you, DoorDash. DoorDash. Thank you to Venmo for opening up the restrictions mm-hmm. on how much money we can give away each week for our winners. I feel like we just got a chance to flood a bunch of people that were bottlenecked because we couldn't move as much money out of the account as we'd obviously needed to for the giveaway. So shout out to Venmo coming through this week. Huge. Shout out to uh, the Raiders having a fucking historic win yep. last night. Yeah, electric. Most points in Raiders history. And shout out to football for being awesome. We got a great weekend ahead of us. Obviously, bowl games start tomorrow mm-hmm. as well. Ooh. Tone, you, I'm Sure, you're giving out all the picks for all those bowl games on Hammer. Done. Happening yeah. here in about yeah. Minutes. We're gonna pick all of them. Let's go. I don't love the ones tomorrow, but bowl quick. season's kind of your thing, though. Yeah, the second week is when I I feel much better about those games. Okay, all right. So we're on the precipice of a great gambling time for mm-hmm. Doug Diggs. Soccer happening this weekend or no? Oh yeah, full slate. Ooh, Burnley playing Everton. Burnley plays Everton. Yeah, two what? plus two fifty on the money line for the Burnley boys. When no. would I see that? Tomorrow morning, I wake up. Yeah. 
What time? Eight or nine? Let's see. I'm guessing nine or ten. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Hockey? We got any good hockey shit this weekend, Nick? What's going on? Always, always. Bunch of games tonight, and then I'm sure I haven't looked for tomorrow, but there's going to be loaded slate, of course. We do have Wemby LeBron tonight in L.A. That's on ESPN. LeBron choosing to do what he did walking into that USC gym Mm -hmm. is just asking. Oh, yeah. Just asking for the world to burn down pretty Mm -hmm. much. Yeah. No reason. Don't have to do it. No reason. I wonder if he's ever met anybody who, like, is in a military family who just explained to him why they get so offended about, you know, not just showing your appreciation during the national anthem, Mm -hmm. what it means to some people versus what it means to other people. And, like, I wonder, you know, I understand that America is imperfect, but if you just meet some of these, like, gold star families or, like, military families, Mm -hmm. and if he just talked to them for maybe a minute and a half, LeBron seems like smart human, good human. It'd be like, uh, oh, okay. So ripple effect of this potentially is offending people who are genuine good human beings. Yeah. Who Le- represent the United States of America. LeBron went to the Mellencamp School of National Anthem. Yeah, it's like so. John Mellencamp, too, that guy. It's tough to listen to him, it, it, you know, because it's like, hey, you know these people. Like, why? There's no reason right now, you know? I feel like a lot of changes happen. Hopefully more will take place. Hopefully our country will become a place that we all hope that it will become. And the only way that takes place is if the good ones, who I think the majority of humans mm-hmm. are, remember that there's going to be bullshit that's going to try to tear us apart. It doesn't have to. Mm. And I understand ignorance can bring a little bit of hate every once in a while. But if we would extend our Hans and maybe introduce ourselves to people we don't know and learn about them a little bit, we'd understand that we all have a lot more in common than we do that separates us. And I think our particular program likes to shine a light on that. Mm-hmm. We like to celebrate the differences because oh, yeah. we are very lucky to be in an NFL locker room with maybe the most diverse backgrounds of people all coming together for one particular cause. And we hope that trickles into the world where we can understand we all got to live here together. That's the case. All of our lives are finite, so we might as well enjoy it. And we might as well stop hating motherfuckers that we don't know. It'd be a lot better that way for all of us. And the fact that you watch our show and allow us to be able to, you know, celebrate sports, something that really unifies all of us, we're the luckiest humans on earth. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you so much. Have the greatest weekend of your life. We can't wait for Overreaction Monday. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Goodbye.